Hey, everybody. Have you heard about the Drunken Peasants Patreon? It helps support the show while getting you some cool perks. Check it out. For $1 per month, you get to use our exclusive fan chat that appears at the bottom of the screen on every episode. For $5 per month, you get two new private shows, including Actual Mania, as well as our back catalog of private shows, plus all lower tier perks. For $10 per month, you get all of our monthly video content. This includes multiple post shows, our monthly reviews, our back catalog of all that content, plus all lower tier perks. For $15 per month, your name will appear in the ending credits of each DP episode, plus all lower tier perks. For $25 per month, you get to take part in our monthly booking committee hangout to help us book our Patreon content for that month, plus all lower tier perks. For $33 per month, you get an exclusive piece of DP merch each month, plus all lower tier perks. For $50 per month, you appear in the opening credits for each DP episode, plus all lower tier perks. For $100 per month, you get to join us as a guest on an episode of the Drunken Peasants Podcast. Plus, you guessed it, all lower tier perks. Visit patreon.com slash dp now to become a patron of the Drunken Peasants Podcast. nothing and then there was the drunken peasants podcast i gotta get a witness no say man you got a joint uh no not on me man i don't have facts to back this up it'd be a lot cooler if you did <laughs> that's true sometimes i cry Oh! Lick my butthole, he laughed. <laughs> From the strangest corners of the internet, here to bring you opinions of the world from an altered perspective, here are your hosts, the Drunken Peasants. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Drunken Peasants Podcast. This is episode 1318, okay. doing it live on a Thursday. Thirsty, thirsty Thursday. And uh, please, everybody, like the stream if you would be so kind. We are at 52% of the way to our goal. That's pretty good for a Thursday. If you want to help us get a little bit closer, that link is pinned right there in the chat. Before we get into today, to today's content, I do have to keep plugging the, the video that's going to be available on our Patreon coming up uh, this Monday, the 18th, to all $10 plus patrons. It will go live at midnight Pacific time on uh, on Monday the 18th, and uh, it's a it's a three and a half hour documentary of my trip to the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Hey, I may Thank not you. agree with everything you say, but I still love you. But I but, don't agree with everything I say. But <laughs> thank you so much for that. Well, I, check out the trailer here. This is the trailer for our three and a half hour nice. documentary. Here it is. Eleven thirty. Eleven thirty. All right. So we've got an hour and fifteen minutes. All right. I see an otter. Well, Somebody's gonna fuck that otter. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, robbery. <laughs> you want to fucking go? Still another. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm not fucking around. Like, I'll, I'll murder a motherfucker right now. She told Ben to stop. <laughs> I'm shooting your only fans right now. <laughs> Goodbye, Jeff Holiday. Goodbye. He's headed back. Uh, Portland kicked my ass again. Yeah. Goodbye. So there you have it. Some of the highlights. Uh, yeah, if you're not a $10 or above patron, this month is a really good month to get on board. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. This <laughs> I I wish I could have gotten this out sooner, but I it took me forever to edit it. it I there was probably like nine hours of footage to to go That's through. Wild. Yeah, yeah. Cause three and a half hours is a lot. So if you've done that much editing, yeah, it, like the, the trailer looks awesome. I yeah. can only imagine how great everything else is. And and. It it was so Portland to have two crackheads fighting <laughs> on the train, you know. Yeah, and and they still weren't as cute as you and Jeff at your little bedroom party. <laughs> <laughs> I was filming his OnlyFans. <laughs> uh, That's also, great. Also, another thing we've got going on right now. If you if you feel so inclined to purchase, I, I have it linked in the description. I'm actually uh, I, I've got this T-shirt out there right now. Jared Genesis, the saddest clown. Oh, yeah. He he look he does this look like a sad amazing. boy. You two looks like you had a gay old time. We did like the Flintstones. <laughs> Yabba dabba do me. Uh, yeah, we're uh, yeah. I Jared uh, Jared filed the false DMCA on me, and you know how when you do that, you like when you dispute it, you got to give like an address and a phone number and everything. He of course yeah. leaked it. So, uh, and, and I got the first post removed, but now the second one's still sitting in the comments of his latest video. So he's playing this game with me right now, but I'm hoping it will eventually lead to the termination of his channel. That's my goal. Yet again. (laughs) Yet again. (laughs) He's a cockroach. He's an idiot. (laughs) I I heard you called his dad. (laughs) I did call his dad. His dad didn't answer, but I called and left a voicemail. Oh. Yes. Oh damn. I did. Yeah, I was gonna tattletale on on Jared. <laughs> he deserves Give him it. some spankings. <laughs> yeah. I, ooh, that's a that's a weird mental image right there. <laughs> yeah, my bad. <laughs> Jared's like seventy year old dad with Jared over his knee with his <laughs> ass exposed and he's slapping him and Jared is I, acting like he doesn't like it, but he has this look in his I, eyes like he does. I was able not to think about what I said until you spelled it out. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. All right. So we're going to uh, we're going to watch. This is a, a collab I didn't see coming, but I shouldn't be surprised uh, in this day and age. It's Pierce Morgan and he has his show Uncensored and he uh, he's discussing the Oscars with two of Eric July's buddies, the uh, n- uh, nerd Roddick and the critical drinker. Uh, I can't wait to hear their takes. I'm tearing them apart. If they have shit takes, I'm taking them down. I have a feeling you're not going to like what they, first of all, they, they <laughs> shit on Barbie big time. And I know you liked that That's movie. Dumb, dumb. So <laughs> those guys are so dumb <laughs> here. Here it is. Here it is. Well, the Barbenheimer beef dominated Hollywood all year, but last night's Oscars saw a knockout blow in the cinematic tussle of our age. Oppenheimer sweeping the ball, winning Best Director, Best Actor, Best Supporting Actor, and Best Picture, and others. It's weird because the Oscars the year before was a sweep, too, because it was every... It, what was the name of that movie? The Everything Everywhere All at Once yeah. took a lot of the Oscars, except um, Brendan Fraser got the Best actor. Uh, Male Actor for yeah. The Whale. And, like, and Emma, they kind of flipped it this year. Emma Stone yeah. got... Yeah, best act. I didn't yeah. even watch it, and I still know this. And I don't even really care, honestly, and I still know this. <laughs> so that's how far it reaches. Barbie, yeah. on the other hand, dying like a dog, winning only one gong from. He acts like there was only two movies up for uh, nomination <laughs> there. Well, the, the fact that Barbie was nominated is a big deal. They usually don't nominate movies based on toys or comic books to yeah. that level. Except for uh, Black Panther, that's the only comic book movie I can think of that got like a nomination at the Oscars. Yeah, it got a big one. That was that was a real cultural uh, shift in comics, though. Yeah, that was that was a big deal for uh, a lot of reasons. Nominations: The Solitary Win was Best Song for Billie Eilish's "What Was I Made For," which you could have said about the movie itself, in my estimation. Unfortunately, Ryan Gosling. In my estimation, man, have you seen the movie? What was it made for? Um, money, uh, f- feel-good empowerment. If you actually watch the movie and see the message behind it, it's 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 a lot deeper than uh, I have a, a doll in my hand. Right. There's, there's a lot to it. Like, if someone would have been like, oh, they're making a Barbie movie, the first thing I would have imagined was that it was for little girls. Like, it would have yeah. been the target audience, but it was an adult movie you know it, it it tackled subjects that 
little kids usually wouldn't understand. You know, yeah, it was uh, what uh, d- despair, uh, an ex- existential despair. <laughs> it was like poking fun at itself. It was like self-aware. Yeah, it 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 was it was self-aware. It was poking fun at society. It wasn't a. Uh, all uh, a huge feminist thing you know men women it really was about where we are placed in society you know ken had his arc where he was like what am i without the the trophy wife type of thing mm-hmm. there was a lot of depth to it if you watched it yeah these guys i think they watched it wanting to find you know a, a trans barbie and they found it so they were oh this is woke i no, watched not it really i watched it and it was okay for me personally, yeah. like it wasn't terrible. I watched uh, if a movie's terrible, I'll stop watching it. So I, <laughs> if I watch a movie all the way through, it's at least passable in my opinion. So. Yeah, Greta Gerwig uh, directed it, and her husband Noah Bombach co-wrote it with her. And he has done so much work. She has done so much work. They're talented people, and they took this what could have been a schlocky kids movie and they made something more into it. And if you hate that, there's something weird about you because well, maybe it wasn't for you. It's Pierce Morgan. <laughs> so there you go. I mean, all of, it's funny because this whole panel agrees with each other, except for one person that they have on. They have like, <laughs> they have like six, seven people on the panel and only one of them has like the opposing view. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Managed to show this wasn't even the best song in Barbie with a barnstorming live performance of I'm Just Ken. So did the dreaded patriarchy have the last laugh in this battle of the blockbusters? And is this the year that finally proves we've had enough, enough, Ken enough, I like what they've done there, of woke Hollywood? Joining me to debate the biggest night in Hollywood. It's my awesome. They're going to hate on Barbie, but then use the joke. Yeah. They're going to use the joke. This is so... Oh, I, I I almost did a slur there. <laughs> you know what? And he wasn't expecting that. He didn't like. He's just reading a teleprompter. Someone else wrote what he's reading there, and he he was like, "Oh, I like what they did there." Because super back Esther Crafter and Ava Santina, and two titans of the YouTube movie community, the critical drinker and nerd Drotty. Well, oh my wait, God. are they the same guy? Are they the same guy? <laughs> no, one's English. Uh, yeah, we are. There's critical drinker Scottish. He's Scottish, I think. Based, Honored. Based on pictures, it's like one is just in 4K. <laughs> Nerdrotic. I mean, like people, people can reform their lives, but Nerdrotic has a rap sheet and a history of like smoking crack and stuff like that, which you know. The, can- the, this guy does look like mundane Matt on crack. <laughs> Because Monday Matt would have lost a lot of weight if he was on crack. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> to have you two gentlemen. Thank you very much, Dave. Okay, I over. I, I, I. It's, it's five. It's a five-person panel, but only the woman in the middle disagrees with the rest of them. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Equally on. And I they see her fight. They have her surrounded. To have you two ladies here, my resident Barbies. Um, let me start a uh, critical drinker, if I may, with you. Skinny Sargon. So this might be heresy, yeah. but I absolutely loathed everything about Barbie. I loathed what it stood for. I loathed what it was. I tried to wade through it and found it unwatchable, man bashing tosh. But I I didn't see man bashing in it. It was just yeah. A, it, it wasn't. Yeah, I didn't feel it, attacked in any way. If, if, if you felt attacked, you felt attacked by the idea that the Barbie verse existed within the mind of like a, an eight year old child. All the Barbies are the idea of what an eight year old child thinks womanhood is. And she's going to be anti men because this is the level where she's an eight year old girl and she thinks, you know, she values womanly things. Boys are icky. It's, it's that's the, the whole point of the story. I laughed so hard when they were traveling from Barbie world to the real world and they were listening to <laughs> Indigo Girls, which is like a well known like <laughs> lesbian folk group. It's pretty funny. Yeah. yeah. And then the song they used when the Kins took over, when they turned the radio on, when they got back in, and it was like, uh, God, I can't remember it, but it was, uh, I want to, I was, I want to use you or something. Well, I can't. I can't remember. 
Yeah, they did the whole set where it's like the the girls were starting to win back power, and they were uh, the, the guys were singing them the song, thinking they were in charge, but the while. girls were being so cute. Here you go, sweet boys. Someone also, says I want to push you around, so it's like Matchbox Twenty. Yeah, yeah. I want to push you around. Well, I will. Well, I will. I want to take you for granted. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that was the switch. The guys got in control that it's like, I'm going to take you for granted. And then the girls use their cutesy stuff. They win back Barbie world, which should be the woman's world anyways. The idea of Barbie is built for women. It's And, and, and the, the man gets to go through his existential journey and realize that he doesn't exist just for the woman. He could be his own man. And I do want to say that they they captured perfectly. You know, I had a lot of... I didn't have a sister, but I had a lot of female cousins around my age, and they had Barbies, and they always had that one Barbie that was fucked up and was like missing a bunch of hair and had like <laughs> draw like marker on its face yeah. and shit, and they yeah. captured that perfectly. I yeah, like. They that. knew their audience. Yeah. They knew their audience. They knew culture. Yeah. Also found Oppenheimer, and this might be heresy, a, a beautifully made film, brilliantly acted film but way too long and bordering on boring. Your thoughts? <laughs> Oppenheimer boring? I, I have not seen Oppenheimer. Boring? Would, is that a word you'd use to describe it? Um, okay, so Oppenheimer's over three hours long, and it's very tonal. Christopher Nolan is building up pace. He's he's building up anticipation. He has this thing he does with Hans Zimmer on the score where he makes the music really uh, lead up to things and draws out, and you're waiting for the, you know, the inevitable explosion, and the whole movie is building up to that point. Yeah, yeah. And then when it explodes, the actual real explosion is the entire story around you know, the impact of this bomb, not in the explosion sense, but in the sense of what it's going to do with the world, you know. For most of the movie, these guys are thinking they might end the world in this experiment, and then they realize what they really did was create, you know, this this nuclear war possibility nuclear yeah. winter or whatever yeah so it's it's uh it's it but but it, it, can, it can get very boring if you can't hang with the idea that it is crawling to a pace and then then it explodes near the end and explodes in a way that is very intricate it's nolan he does this with a lot of yeah. movies and i usually like movies that are based on historical events so that's cool and with a movie like that you already know the ending so you have to find a way to make it entertaining to get to an ending that you already know what's going to happen it's like yeah. titanic you already know the ship is going to sink you know, the, the the one thing Oppenheimer does differently, if you're not deep in the story, it goes into the politics of everything. Yeah. So it's it's like there there's really is more there if you're not deep into the politics and history. But if you are, you know it, right? Yeah. Titanic, you know, it sinks. Oppenheimer, you know, they invent the bomb. But with Oppenheimer, it's like everything that went around to get this here and how he was maybe played against the public because he went through a huge court case uh, for his his actions. Well, I think that's pretty much par for the course when it comes to Christopher Nolan movies, but uh, it seems like it's just a sign of the times in that um, perhaps if Oppenheimer had been released in a, a different year when there was um, stronger competition, it might not have fared so well, but it just seems like... Uh, that was that was really what it was up against, you know. It was uh, it was a sign of the the low quality, the low bar that Hollywood had set for itself. So Oppenheimer, he, he's saying, if there would have been a, a better crop of movies to come out, Oppenheimer probably wouldn't have won. I think I think the reason Oppenheimer won was because people had it when it dropped the same weekend as Barbie. It got that. Almost bounce. Barbie was one thing. Oppenheimer was the other. Everybody knew Oppenheimer was the more, you know, prestiged, uh, prestigious film. Yeah. And it, the power of Barbie and then the coupling of Oppenheimer and who was behind it, Nolan, the actors behind it, the performances behind it were, you know, impressive. That just pushed it to a whole nother level. It piggybacked off Barbie. And then it got this awareness. When it comes to the Oscars, you know, it might not you might not be the best movie. You're just the movie that the voters are most aware of being the best movie. So Barbie gives them that extra push because of the the coexistence of the two. Last year that Oppenheimer really was the best of the bunch. Yeah, it probably was a bit too long and um possibly a bit too self-indulgent in places, but <laughs> it was not a great year for movies. And so I think um 
the Oscars this year, it's probably an example. I don't understand how a movie can be self-indulgent. What's self-indulgent about a movie? Uh, you could argue maybe that it it plays too much into the cinematics and makes it too um pres- like it's it's too too into itself maybe i mean but that's um, that that's a nolan trait nolan made batman great again you know what i mean yeah. like he w- he went on to do interstellar he inception he takes movies and he 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 kind of breaks what film can do with a lot of his movies this one was uh, kind of a traditional Nolan film, but it, it was that long story, and then it fu- kind of falls into place in a Tarantino way with time uh, being cut up in different areas uh, and showing you different parts of the process. It's it's one to follow. It's it's a long. It, it's it's easily boring if you can't keep up with it. You know, example of playing it safe and picking the logical choice because it was pretty much the best that we got. Last year. And, and the Drotti, I mean, if you I want to hear this- them talk about poor things, are they just going to ignore poor things? Because that was a juggernaut film that could have won film of the year, too. We'll see. I, I can't remember Safety if they mentioned thing it. to the event itself. You know, if you compare it to when Ricky Gervais hosted the Globus, for example, a spray gunned everybody. Now, Jimmy, I think mainly they focus on and, and this is this is critical drinkers shtick. Nothing is as good as it used to be. Everything sucks now. The Oscars suck now. And yeah. We probably shouldn't even do them anymore, I think, is where they're going to go. Kimmel was it. pretty tame, I thought. Um, the show itself was fine, but I found having five previous winners coming up for all the main categories and paying unctuous homage to the new I winners. I love the opinions uh, of dudes with a wall of toys behind them <laughs> that have no joy in their lives and just complain about everything. Yeah, both oh, of them man. have that. And the, and, the, and the candidates, the nominees, I found all that got very, very nauseating quite quickly. And it kind, of, it kind of said to me that with that and the fact that no one dares make any speeches now which are remotely political, with one exception, I think, of a director, uh, other than that, everybody stayed on safe script. It's just, again, that the Oscars have got very safe and, I would argue, boring. People don't watch the Oscars to hear political speeches, though. Yeah, every once in a while you get a political take. But I remember Michael don't... Moore. <laughs> Michael Moore got booed, and he got booed by half of the crowd and cheered by half of the crowd when the bowling for Columbine, <laughs> or was it Fahrenheit 9-11? It was one of those. Um, yeah. he, and he won the Oscar for it, and he used that time that he had to like call out George Bush. And I, I remember like people were like, why is he doing this? This is an award show. I, I also want to point out how every one of these dickheads here are the type of people that say, keep politics out of right. Hollywood. Keep make politics about politicians. And now they're looking for something to complain about. And this guy, Pierce Morgan, really said there was no political speeches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's the the worst criticism I have for him. It was just a slog. And uh, yeah, the the five act- he's got a fucking isom hat. Over on the left, <laughs> on on uh, on top of one of his guitars over there. Yeah, what a yeah. actors coming out and. J- it- hey, nerd, Roddick, why don't you put some of my some of my product placement on when you're on PS Morgan? <laughs> it's so pretentious. Oh, what if he got sent a thousand bucks to do it? Probably. <laughs> Or, or he did uh, He did this one of those, like, I'll make you an offer you can't refuse. Like, you know, maybe something bad will happen if you don't do it, you know? Ooh. Yeah. Cringe. I couldn't get through it, and I had to actually stop watching it at some point. And it's, and it's really hard for Hollywood uh, to fight this giant disconnect they have with their audience when you come out and do something like that. But that, honestly, least offensive thing they've done in a while, and it's clear that they had a talking to. There was... Because this is a, let's just, it's a pretty hyper-political year. By the way, I I, I was going to mention this earlier, but I forgot. I went to Comic-Con last weekend, and there were a ton of the, like, fucked-up Barbie cosplays there. <laughs> I bet, yeah. There, there were all the different types of Barbies I saw. There, there were, like, whole cliques of, like, different Barbies hanging out <laughs> together there. But the one I saw the most was, like, the fucked-up weird-looking one with the weird hair and everything. That was very yeah. popular. For them to be quiet, Great. average average Barbie's probably not going to make it to Comic Con as often as weird Barbie yeah, is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, was uh, yeah. definitely the producer saying tone it down until the end when they completely blew it and told half their audience that uh, to 
F off anyway, which is the biggest problem Hollywood has. Uh, and they they just don't understand uh, yeah, to this day that, uh, that that their their disconnect is something that it, it's never mentioned in the press. It's never mentioned uh, anywhere, really, with the audience and, and how many people they've driven away. Uh, I think, the, you know, I don't know if the ratings are going to be great for this. I think they'll be minimal, but it was just boring and pretentious i mean less people watch tv in general now so we can't compare and, the ratings now to how they were 20 years ago yeah and the oscars were always pretentious it, it's always been about what elite hollywood thinks is the the t tip top peak of cinema based on elite hollywood's opinion <laughs> the so, fact that barbie was there is actually the most welcoming that i think the oscars has been yeah and and slaps aside like will smith would not have won best actor like 10 years ago they they weren't putting the they weren't they weren't normally putting actors at his level. They, they weren't nominating him. They'd nominate like Adrian Brody or something like that. We, we did have Denzel Washington win uh, a while ago, right? Would you consider that a Will Smith level? or is No, he's, he's a better actor than Will Smith, in my opinion. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's hard for me to judge uh, who's a good actor or not. Um, in the, I, I consider Will Smith a good actor, but I also know that he's done a ton of schlocky stuff too. Denzel has a way better record of yes. picking movies. Yeah, and I think it's a dying old model. It's a 20th century model that's just had its time. Right, I, Ava. I mean, Barbie getting flatlined by a movie about an atomic bomb, I found personally quite satisfying. <laughs> Uh, because and also the fact that the biggest star of the Barbie night Barbie getting flatlined, but Barbie was the most talked about movie of the night still, even though Oppenheimer won. The 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 Ken performance was huge. The, the, they they had the, the the musical performances on lock. Connected to Barbie was of course Ken mm. Ryan Gosling. I thought he did the best uh, show with his little performance, was brilliant. But mainly because he had Slash next to him, not Barbie. You know, you replace Dumb as a Rock Barbie with Slash, one of the great guitar heroes of all time. Yeah, that would have been really cool if Margot Robbie could have wailed on guitar, but she can't. So what's the, <laughs> I, I don't understand. <laughs> oh, yeah, he had he had Slash instead of Barbie. OK, he's, he's trying to compare this. Oh, <laughs> this is the, the pianist. pianist, the pianist goose juice. You yeah. spelled it wrong. <laughs> but but like. Barbie wasn't in the I'm Just Ken performance anyways. This was the men-based performance of the movie. Piers Morgan, Morgan has tried to make this something it's not. Slash obviously just got some pizza rolls. He, he rolled in here ready to go. He's, he's killing it on guitar, making an iconic performance. There is no I'm Just Ken without Barbie. To try and separate the two is separation, uh, the, the, the begging to attack this movie. The, the, Brian Gosling, Margot Robbie are stars. Yeah. They were stars of Barbie. Hollywood is disconnected it's, from the audiences, said a guy who has never spent a second on a movie set. Put up or shut up, bitch. Also, shout out to my boy Godzilla for winning his first Oscar at 70 years old. Godzilla! Godzilla minus one best film on 2023. It was really good. And suddenly the whole thing works, right? And I'm seeing a sequel which will be called Simply Ken, and we'll have dozens of other Kens who are all brilliantly talented. This sounds, oh, like, you know what? this sounds like his gay fantasy, to be honest this, with you. This reminds me a lot of when Eric July was trying to pitch his video game. He was fantasy talking about his ultimate video game. Yeah. We don't need Pierce Morgan booking Hollywood for us. No matter how bad Hollywood is, Pierce Morgan's fantasy football of Hollywood is not the answer. And world leaders and all their in all the things that they do, and there'll be one woman, a token Barbie, who's going to be dumb and sits in the corner, and we just laugh at women for the entire two hours. How do you think that would go down? Well, I'm sure that a lot of women will go to watch that, and I'm sure that it will make a lot of very clever movie execs a lot of money. But look, you know, I, I don't really understand why you think I love Barbie or want to speak up for it. You know, what I do care about do is... Do you hate Barbie? What I do care about is that Greta Gerwig is... <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you hate Barbie? Do you hate black people? Do you know, yeah. Do you love Barbie? Do you love Barbie? Do you love Barbie? <laughs> Keenly looked over. I mean, she made Little Women a, a few years ago, and that should have been Oscar. That should have been Oscar nominated because it was Absolutely a fantastic not. production. No. Look, it goes to it goes to show that 
women are left out of the conversation because a lot of the time men don't think that it's worth their time to watch a quote unquote women's film. And I mean, it was enjoyed by you women, know, women all over the world. Con- if women produce good content, they'll get all the accolades. I don't understand this obsession with, bar for with, with, with Barbie because Barbie and as a character. I, I want to I want to comment really quick. He's saying if we watched a movie where men made fun of women the entire time, would we like it? We did. We nominated it too. It's called Poor Things. Hmm. It's literally Emma Stone getting called a pretty retard and and pushed at the hands of men. She, she's whored out. She it's it's her laughing at her for being a woman the entire way through the movie. The same way we laughed at men in Barbie, but different. And basically, poor thing. Emma Stone's movie was like Barbie for goth people. <laughs> So it's quite unlikable. She's a complete bitch. She's a rude cow. She treats Ken horribly. <laughs> I don't understand your, why you're having this totally hor- agree. horrible plastic person being kind of the echelon or the upper echelon of the ultimate woman. It's ridiculous. Mm. So apart from the fact that she's a horrible character, the film was trash. They spent more money on the marketing than the actual c- content production, which shows a lot. You know, this idea that women always have to be nominated or you always have to have some diverse... Uh, there, yes, there's always a best actress and best supporting <laughs> actress category, so women do always have to be nominated, yes. Category to show that there's progress. It's ridiculous. This is why Hollywood has suffered so much. Hollywood has had bad film years. In 2001, when Halle Berry won the Oscar, it was a pretty slow film year. But you, could, you couldn't argue that the content was terrible. Now the content is terrible because you can't make anything that you want to because everything has to have some diversity push. And even when you... You do. I, okay. okay, I want to bring in. I want to bring in critical, critical drinker again because it seems to me the movie You're the I only most one. enjoyed going to the movies to watch was Top Gun Maverick. Now I'm old enough to remember yep. the first one, which I absolutely <laughs> loved, and rather like <clears throat> The Godfather, uh, the sequel more than lived up to the hype and was as good, if not better, than the first one. But I took two of my sons write a passage. We ended up punching the air. The Top Gun series cannot be compared to The Godfather. That was such a weird comparison (laughs) right there. What Uh, what he was saying was it lived up to the original. Yeah, Um, sure. But yeah, it's definitely not. (laughs) It's not The Godfather. So Yeah, I mean, like some people consider The Godfather the best movie ever. And then some people consider Godfather 2 the best movie ever. Yeah. It, Some people actually think Godfather Three is all right. <laughs> I've never, I've never seen Godfather Three. I I've haven't. Never seen it. Uh, about a year ago, Joe was rewatching the Godfathers, and I'd I rewatched God, or I think I watched Godfather Two for the first time. It was like a it was a snow day here in Seattle, so I was yeah. stuck in the house, and I didn't. He was going to watch Godfather Three, and I'd never seen it. And I ended up uh, not missing. I missed that day. So I haven't <laughs> seen it either. You called in sick. <laughs> Shouting. Yeah. One of the best afternoons out we'd had in a long time. A big cinema, watching it in all its glory. And, and that didn't win Best Picture. And I'm like, well, why, why doesn't a movie like that win Best Picture? Why don't you just sometimes, Hollywood, just sit back and go, we're going to give it to the film that actually most enthralled people not the one that preached to everyone like barbie and tried to make everyone hate men but actually or one How that did, just- did, barbie enthralled people we had a national shortage of pink paint because of barbie <laughs> and people were team barbie and it, it it barbie did not make women want to hate men it made weak men mad at women <laughs> yeah i mean like if anything should be called out for that it should be like lifetime original movies those are the movies that make women want to hate men I, and themselves like th- everybody is suffering in those things yeah they're terrible so worthy it almost ate itself in syrupy worthiness uh, like oppenheimer brilliantly made though it was why not give it to a movie like top gun maverick as they used to give it to Rocky one or, you know, the God rock. The first Rocky is infinitely better in my opinion than top top gun was a popcorn movie. Like, huh? I I don't to, I mean, top gun didn't get any nominations. A movie like top gun in the eighties wouldn't have gotten a nomination. I was never big into Top Gun or Rocky back in the day. I'd I've watched them, you know, but they they never enthralled me. So, uh, top gun, did a, a a lot i think when it comes to the the, the air plane flying and stuff on film that was sure. impressive yeah. so sometimes they'll give you uh 
Oscar points for when you do something technically great in a movie sure. beyond just the story and acting. But but Rocky Rocky was like a, a, a an American story, you know? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was based on a true story. Um, the the guy, <laughs> in reality, the guy that it was based on was such a weirdo uh, that uh, Sylvester Stallone ended up, like, ghosting him and not even putting him in the movie. <laughs> Chuck, his name's Chuck Wepner. He was supposed to be a guy. He was going to be a guy that uh, Muhammad Ali was just going to squash it like to to meet his quota to, as for title defenses and for some reason this dude could like take a billion punches and not go down and that's what it was all about <laughs> that's badass yeah <laughs> he actually uh he fought andre the giant in a like chuck uh, webner did or yes um, chuck webner fought andre the giant the the same night that anoki fought muhammad ali the the undercard was webner versus andre the giant oh my god i want to watch that yeah I want to watch that. <laughs> it was in another venue. I don't think it was at the Tokyo Dome, like the Ali fight was, but I think it was on. I, I could. I'll have to look Father, it up. These great classic films that stood the test of time. I think um, the Academy traditionally looks down on these big pop, um, pop culture, um, popcorn blockbuster type movies, uh, and so they they tend to get overlooked as not being worthy enough of an Oscar. And when you look at things like, oh yeah, uh, here I'll I'll throw it here. So you can just see like a couple seconds of it. Yeah, it's Chuck Wepner, little ass Chuck Wepner. I guess he's probably a pretty like he was a heavyweight boxer. So he looks he does he actually doesn't look that short next to Andre. No, oh, yeah, yeah. And Andre Andre isn't that um, out of shape at this point. He's no, probably... no, this is before WrestleMania three and everything. So yeah. they, I think this was a work though. Um, but yeah, possibly. Yeah, I think Gorilla Monsoon yeah. got involved too. Gorilla Monsoon was working okay, heel yeah. at the time. And ran, look at this. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's the guy Rocky was based off of. And Sylvester Stallone tells a story about how he tried to give him like a scene in the movie just because the story was based on him and he could not handle him. Like he was too <laughs> needy. And yeah, so well, the, the madman got in the ring with Andre. <laughs> yeah, that is crazy. Rocky, as you gave an example, that was a low budget movie at the time. Uh, mm -hmm. Sylvester Stallone was an unknown actor. And so it really was like this, um, you know, million to one shot. There was a story associated with that. With something like Top Gun Maverick, fantastic movie, a great example of catering to your audience. Mm -hmm. Barbie is a great example of trying to cater to the female audience. It's very female oriented, obviously. Uh, Top Gun Maverick, the exact opposite. Very Chuck Webner was six foot five, two twenty four. Very much um, okay, skewed yeah. towards yeah. the male audience. They understand what men are looking for. You know, they want to see the technology, the fighter jets, the the um, awesome pilots doing what they do, um, the patriotism, the sort of pro America stuff. All great stuff. Um, it just understands exactly what the audience wants, and it gives it to them in spades. Is it uh, is it an Oscar worthy movie? Possibly not. Who cares? No one cares what the Oscars do anymore. They're large. Then why are you talking about it? Apparently, you care. Someone cares. <laughs> he got invited on a show to talk about it, so people See, care. I care about the Oscars. And I'm only watching this because you guys care about the exactly. Oscars. And I want to make fun of you caring. Pussies. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Irrelevant really interesting. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, also, let's talk about the host for a minute, uh, Jimmy Kimmel uh, and Nedronic, because I don't know, there were some. Uh, pretty. Uh, okay. I, I, there's a there's a super chat about Joe Lewis being better than Rocky and Ali. They never Ali and, and well Rocky wasn't a real boxer, so we're not going to include him. But uh, <laughs> Joe Lewis and Ali, that's a huge speculate speculation. Joe Lewis was the greatest of his era, and Muhammad Ali was the greatest of his era. I will say Joe Lewis got his ass beat by Rocky Marciano. Uh, so so if we if we replaced the fake Rocky with actual Rocky Marciano. Would you say Joe Lewis beats Rocky Marciano, or uh, like it, it, you just said Rocky Marciano whooped his ass, right? So even there, Joe Ro Lewis wouldn't beat Rocky Marciano. Joe Lewis didn't beat Rocky Marciano, who was like Rocky Marciano uh, is the only heavyweight to retire undefeated with the world championship he like retired with it he never lost it and he had a perfect record he never lost in his entire boxing career i think mayweather Damn. might have 
surpassed him in undefeated, like with an undefeated streak. But yeah, he beat Joe. But Joe Lewis was at the end of his career too. That's another thing about it. So okay. yeah, but Joe Lewis was great. Uh, I I don't know who would have. Joe Lewis was a totally different personality than than Ali too. Ali was a shit talker, and Joe Lewis was like a very respectful, kind of quiet, strong, silent type kind of guy. So. There was one joke he did that hasn't really been picked up, but it was aimed at the German actress who was up for for one of the awards. And he said this. And by the way, Joe Lewis ended up penniless working as like a doorman at a hotel towards the end of his life, too. He got completely screwed. Damn. Promoters kept all the money. Sandra Huller, two movies. Sandra plays a woman on trial for murdering her husband in Anatomy of a Fall and a Nazi housewife living next to Auschwitz in the zone of interest. And while these are very heavy subjects for American moviegoers, in uh, Sandra's native Germany, they're called rom-coms. <laughs> <laughs> and now they're gonna be like, Jimmy Kimmel's lame. I gotta say, I thought that was really, that really missed the mark for me. Mm. Uh, and she looked very <laughs> awkward and embarrassed by that. Am I wrong to be thinking that? Was they actually- all react without laughing when he makes jokes at them. They all play it off. Yeah. That's the, that's the, that's the celebrity thing to do is like, oh, not give, not give credit. It, it, that joke was funny in the fact that People in Germany are more serious than Americans. And what we would take as serious here is a rom-com there. It's, that's the joke. Germans are so serious. Her reaction being serious solidifies the point of the joke. <laughs> well, I, and I think, I think more, Pierce Morgan's trying to say this was like a, a joke in poor taste or something, which it doesn't <sighs> seem like it is. It's a joke. <laughs> we, there's been edgier jokes at the Oscars before. Way edgy. Way yeah, edgier. Yeah, yeah. Jimmy Kimmel is not edgy. At, I mean, he has been in his past, but not these days. Not now that he's like a talk show host. He's uh, I, ABC's Jimmy Fallon. So right, right. ABC is, is less edgy than NBC. Right. <laughs> Pretty unacceptably offensive. I, I, I don't worry so much about offense as Jimmy Kimmel not being funny at yeah. all i think i think his presence offends me as as he pretends to be a, co- a comedian as you said piers it's such a safe move to have him there that one joke i i think his worst joke was at the end when when he fell right into pr- uh trump's trap and mm. and read trump roasting him which well, let's was take a, a look I'll tell you what, let's assessment. take a look at that because actually that yeah. was a very interesting moment so he actually trump's gets a trap mess- Huh? that Trump has, has posted on social media about him, and he reads it out. Let's watch. Has there ever been a worse host than Jimmy Kimmel at the Oscars? <laughs> His opening was that of a less-than-average person trying too hard to be something which he is not and never can be. So, Ned Drolick, I mean, yeah, you know... Oh, right. they're not going to play Jimmy Kimmel owning him with the, with the end of his joke? Apparently <laughs> not. He's going to play... <laughs> Pussies. It's entitled These are white weak pack. men. These are all weak men. But it felt a bit self-indulgent to me doing that. Yeah, he even acknowledged it, and he went ahead and did it anyway mm. after he was criminally unfunny the entire night. Uh, and he's just a safe pick. Uh, he hasn't been funny in years. He's one of Well, the- I mean, when they pick an unsafe pick like Ricky Gervais, people get pissed. So Man, I think Ricky Gervais, did he ever host the Oscars or was I that just he, the Golden Globes? I thought he did, but maybe I'm getting it confused. Um, yeah, they're around the same time period. I thought that was just the Golden Globes. But maybe he did do the Oscars, but the Oscars are notoriously safe. Yep. Yeah, I mean, like the edgiest thing is a woman dressed as a Native American accepts someone else's award for them. Or someone gets slapped. <laughs> Worst hosts I've ever seen. All we kept on seeing on Twitter was clips from Oscar shows 20 years ago and people going, remember when the Oscars were good? Yeah. Remember when things were funny? We are so far away from that. They are so far away from their peak ratings. And uh, I understand. Yeah, I wonder why. That- I wonder why you check Twitter and everybody you follow was saying, remember when something was good. Is, is, is that does that sound strange? For Nerd Rotic and someone around Nerd Rotic to remember when something was good. You guys are <laughs> fixated on the member berries. You're fixated on the past. Exactly. And you think you think you were the ones that invented it, but you're copycatting South Park from what eight years ago? <laughs> that they want to be safe now after you know helping divide our country, playing into it for so long, especially during some strife. 
And you, you brought up Top Gun Maverick. So yeah, strife. it should win Best Picture. It saved Hollywood. There's a couple of movies that saved Hollywood. Yeah. Let's not forget 2019. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm looking, and you're right about Ricky Gervais. He he never hosted the Oscars. Yeah. Uh, they do always pick a pretty safe host for the Oscars. the 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 person who's who hosted the Oscars the most ever is Bob Hope, who was definitely very family friendly. Nineteen times Bob Hope hosted wow. the Oscars. Then Billy Crystal nine times. Then Johnny Carson, and then mm. a Whoopi Goldberg and Jack Lemmon are like the top wow. five. Yeah, yeah, that's like before most of those guys were before my time. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I probably caught a few of them when I was a kid, but it's, it's so goofy. As, These guys uh, are just so goofy. Yeah. Uh, nine billion dollar films. Since then, they've had six. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's so, a good point. But would Barbie not fit into that? Because was Barbie not a Hollywood safety? Well, Barbie and Oppenheimer well. did very good box office. You Oops. can't deny that. I just hated the fact Oops. that millions Oops. and millions of women Trying to say w- Top Gun saved and- Hollywood when Barbie made billions. These assholes talking out of the side of their mouth, hiding that the other side is full of Barbie Cockenheimer. <laughs> had to hear the word patriarchy 11 times in a movie and were made to right. think all men are evil. Well, right? no, look, and I love the fact that last so night, look, Ken oh has the last laugh. That just made me laugh. Yeah, look, um, I, I don't like success. white... <laughs> it just it was funny. It yeah, I mean, that's sort of white... The biggest movie. standout star last night was Ken, right? And Barbie is sat there like a grinning doll, doing nothing, winning nothing. Poor right, Margot Robbie. Mm-hmm. All right. I like how he's... Yeah, he's... he's <laughs> He's, he's talking about them using their character names. Bobby sat there all night and didn't win anything. <laughs> Margot Robbie has been in big budget movies with the greatest directors of our time. Uh, Barbie was just good. another one. It's always been very safe and corny. One Chris Rock tried to be funny that one year <laughs> everyone got mad at him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Chris Rock tried to be edgy one time, got slapped in the face, and they gave his attacker an award. Yeah, and he wasn't even the host; he was just like presenting an award, right? He wasn't like when the he got ma- slapped. He was he was hosting, right? Was he the was, main host? I th- I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I thought it was he those women around the rest of the night. I thought it was those women that year. Uh, was it maybe? Yeah, uh, it was 2002, right? Or I'm sorry, 2022, rather, right? Uh, it's, sure, it yeah. says here the main hosts were Regina Hall, Amy Schumer, and Wanda Sykes that year. Huh. Uh, in in 2016, Chris Rock was the main host of the Oscars. In, yeah, maybe I just remember. Uh, just remember it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's how big the slap was. Yep. she's made gazillions out of producing. I think he was just there to present a, an award. Yeah. Well done, Margot. I think she's great. Sucks. Love her personally. Oh. Great actress. But the Barbie. Play out last night was Ken's the ultimate winner. It's all about Ken. Yeah, but it's not even, think, it's not the sort of feminism that we engage in regularly, is it? It's, it's sort of white feminism, white rich person feminism. Well, talking about, okay, is, how is, would you have felt if a naked woman had come on stage last night clutching a little thing over her genitalia and the whole joke was about her fact that she was topless and semi naked? Because we saw John Cena doing it, right? I would have called the police because clearly that's a mentally unwell person. Now, if that had been a woman, and I'd say, wow, she looks hot. You would have gone, you disgusting, objectifying pig. How dare you? Why are we not saying the same thing here? I have to say that actually well, does make me feel... Well, why as a man can you not respond to the women and say, no, I'm looking at a nude body that is objectively attractive and being presented nude? I should be able to have a, a reaction to the like female form. Who talks about wrestling that doesn't know kayfabe isn't real. <laughs> quite uncomfortable but but does it you know, yeah it does actually yeah but do we not was this not a thing of the early 2000s were we not doing this all the time i mean women were naked on page three in our newspapers well, i thought we'd all moved that's... on this was the whole point yeah. well but you, you know, know men are having so women their moments men are having their moments we can regress no the truth is <laughs> esther the truth is that women have had it. I love John Cena as an actor. It it keeps him away from a wrestling ring, <laughs> and that's what I, I want. I, I, I consider that a good thing too. I think he's a better actor than wrestler too. I agree. I agree. He uh, he's. You know what? It always pissed me off, and I knew it was a cop out. They were always like, "We can't turn John Cena heel." There's all these kids; he's their hero. It's like, and now he's in movies where he's played the villain before. Uh, you know. I'm- 
So I guess there was a couple points where he almost did turn heel too. Yeah, but he, they just pulled it back. He talks about that now. Yeah, he the, he was going to like I, I think all the way back. I, I think like 2012 or something like that. Both ways. I'm sorry. As a as a breed, you've had this with stuff right. like with the objectifying. Right. <laughs> well, you're a breed, yeah. With the objectifying, with the objectifying, <laughs> with the objectifying debate. Who did he call nudity, a breed? The way that women think is absolutely fine to drool over semi-naked, naked blokes, right? In he sounds like King Cobra right now, bitching about gender relations. <laughs> it's exactly like that. Yeah. Yeah. King Cobra has an excuse. They have a naked man on TV, and all the women are like, oh, that's so hot. But if there's a naked woman, and I say she's hot, then you call me a sexist. He does that kind yeah. of stuff all the time. There were at least uh, two movies. Uh, I, I know Oppenheimer and uh, Poor Things, two very well-regarded movies, had uh, the female form, nudity, sexualized in it, and it was celebrated. And just because America doesn't allow that stuff on TV, but they'll allow a, a naked man's body, who, by the way, this naked body, everybody is saying is a humiliation ritual. He has showed exactly that much skin in wrestling matches. Yes. He has. <laughs> it's so dumb. In his early days, he wore like brief tights. So, yeah. Yeah. Hollywood or whatever it may be. It's, it's but so the dumb. Moment a man does it over a woman. They have to be cancelled, expunged, and arrested. I would completely disagree with that because all of the Sydney Sweeney narrative over the past week has been, oh my God, this woman is so beautiful. That what is not acceptable is when men are like, I would yeah, like to Sydney, do. Yeah, all- Sydney Sweeney's boobs on Saturday Night Live got the ex- probably a far more welcome sexualized reaction than John Cena at the Oscars. And Sydney Sweeney knows that she's got nice boobs. They're not even huge. They're nice. And she puts them out there and people, guys respond, women respond because it's, we're starting to come back to the fact that you can be attracted to people again. We had a weird couple of years. It's true. They actually put us, they put us on time out. If you don't remember, we weren't allowed to come out of our houses for, a while yeah it was fucking weird yep <laughs> we're coming back to normalcy now yep all things to that woman that's the, but I see this all the, the thing with women see, the thing is women claim to pull dark like remember to be... pull dark every time a new series yeah. of pull dark came out there would be aiden turner with the kids off and women going what do i do to aiden turner yeah. and we're all supposed to go well that's great because it's you know why we say great because men don't care because it's well, not well, threatening the is, is you it can't, you can't have it both ways with the whole sydney sweeney thing yes it's because she had her boobs out and she looked like she was auditioning to be a wet nurse but the point the, the, the thing is you can't that's such a cringy comment have it because there were some men that were objective i don't think they audition to be wet nurses. I know, but everyone was celebrating it. Yeah. Somehow when it comes to men, it's, it's, it's basically a form of revenge. She wouldn't have women, to audition, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to say it, but seeing men, objectifying men or treating men in the way, in the yeah. dehumanizing way you don't want to see women being treated as, it's, it's seen as a form of and revenge. By the way, but you got away with it But here's ages, the so secret, here Esther. Men don't care. If women want to object, <laughs> yeah. if women Come want to objectify naked. me, objectify away. You'll make my day. Nobody's doing that. Nobody's doing that with Pierce Morgan. <laughs> That's not now happening. Now he sounds worse than Cobra. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could right? never do that, Pierce. And That's most a hate women, crime. And most women I know, whether they want to be admitted or not, like being objectified. If they're looking great, they like men to go, wow. But it's context, isn't True. there? There's context to that. Really? What's it's not even well, context. It's delivery. Someone... Most men are just bad at objectifying women. <laughs> I'm sorry. Get some tact. It's not that hard to be yeah. uh, charming and witty when you objectify a woman. I'm, it's, 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 there, it's really a big window. You can crawl right through if you're sweet and, and, and just a little nuanced about it yeah you don't have to go from zero to a (laughs) hundred guys there's too many show bob and vagines out there yes that's that's a problem yes open bob you know is objectifying you (laughs) you know in a nice way yeah that's great what's positive objectivity how do you feel if a builder wolf whistles at you how do you feel fine Fine with that. Is that exactly. positive? Oh, that's positive. positive. When has any objectified. woman in history ever but what been you genuinely don't want, upset by you don't want, a bunch of builders? You don't want to feel threatened by a man, right? Well, that, so that, I that, agree. That, that, yeah. that, no, no, I agree. Right. If it was about late that. at night and then a man is wolf whistling at I'm you, I'm talking about purely the objectification debate. Let me bring the guys back in who are being objectified. Oh, damn it. I, I was hoping he just like booted them off the show and didn't even mention it. 
It was nice to see him go away for a while. Yeah. <laughs> their absence from this debate, uh, right uh, let me talk to, to your critical drinker about Robert Downey Jr. and a quip that uh, Jimmy Kimmel made about his drug taking. Oh, yeah. This is the highest point of Robert Downey Jr.'s long and illustrious career. Well, one of the highest points. Um, but... <laughs> Robert is gonna... <laughs> That's funny. He 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 leaned into it. He was like, "Yeah, yeah. you know, dude." Yeah. Oh, he, he, yeah. If I was him, I would be proud of how far I've came after that. Yeah. Uh, another actor, not at Robert Downey Jr.'s level, but another actor that leans into like his sordid past is Rob Lowe. He was in that. <laughs> he was in that sex tape Boots movie. Are loved by all men, women, gay, straight, young, and old. They remind us of being babies and are comforting. Also, women objectify men all the time. Men don't have feelings. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. Men aren't used to being as objectified as women are, so it's still kind of exciting. <laughs> was that two on the nose or was that a drug motion you made? <laughs> He's like, come on, Jimmy. You're yeah. the comedian. You should know. Yeah. <laughs> Made a very odd joke about, so about, about when we had a rectangular penis. There. It was all very bizarre. Uh, but Danny Jr. didn't look very... Did, well, hold on. A joke about a rectangular <laughs> penis? What? what? What was that? Hold on. Did we miss something? I don't, I just, I don't know what that was. Okay, okay, so... Was that a drug motion you made? And then, okay, Robert Downey... Okay, drug motion. Robert Downey Jr.'s like, okay, wrap it up. And then he then so made a very bad. odd joke about so about whether he had a rectangular penis. It was all very bizarre. <laughs> I, didn't I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it. We're gonna need context. <laughs> We're gonna need context for that one. Uh, he says he made a joke about that. I don't. I didn't watch the Oscars, so I didn't. I don't know. But I don't recall that one. <laughs> Okay. Uh, but Danny Jr. didn't look very amused by that. I'm not surprised, really. If, you, if you've come back from drug addiction... I don't is... need these people telling me what being amused looks like. The nerd erotic and uh, the, the critical drinker are in the business of being unamused. When they're ever amused by anything, they lose viewers. Pierce Morgan, I don't think he knows what uh, being amused is. Yeah, I, when when you're a celebrity and you're at the Oscars and you're sitting up front, you're gonna get lightly roasted, and that's what just happened. You know, like he played into the joke too. Yeah, yeah. He literally played off of the joke. Yeah, it's so stupid to suggest he doesn't didn't look amused. He was playful. This is your greatest moment as an actor, your first Oscar. Do you really want a guy cracking jokes about your drug taking? Yeah, I mean, Robert's trying to laugh, laugh it off there and hopefully they were going to move on quickly. But it's probably just another example of Jimmy falling on his arse as a comedian and as a host. Like, that was a poorly judged joke. It didn't really land. You could tell people... They're snowflakes, dude! They are snowflakes, right? I mean, it's they're so bad. they're the ones that are easily oh, offended. Totally. They are the weakest people I think I've ever seen. I'm I'm gonna say that the 40 year old stay at home moms that got dressed up for Barbie put up with more in one day than these guys put up with all year long. They're so frail. We weren't really loving it, and it just felt like a bit mean spirited, considering you know this was Robert winning an Oscar that night. I mean, it was like 30 years ago. Yeah, and he turned his life around completely. Yeah, he went from he, he literally got, was so drunk he walked into the wrong house and crawled into a child's bed and passed out. The child the kid wasn't was not there. In the bed. Yeah, yeah. She wasn't in the bed. Kid, but but that is like so bottom of the like rock bottom. Yes. And and then now he's one of the highest paid, highest acclaimed actors of all time, and it took him a while to be accepted back into Hollywood, but yeah. he did it. Yeah. He got back. That that's you. You can't not remind people of where he came from if you truly want to honor him, because that's part of his story. And I don't think he's afraid to acknowledge that, because you you're damn proud when you go from that bottom to that height. So yeah, poorly judged. I wouldn't have done it. Didn't feel necessary, and it wasn't funny in the first place. No, Drotty. Just generally, <laughs> it about wasn't the funny at the first place. Oh, I, I know humor. Watching them when I was young. 
when David Niven might host it or Billy Crystal or whatever, it always felt incredibly glamorous. One thing that struck me last Yeah, time, nothing says glamour like Billy Crystal. <laughs> 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 like, what? It's But also, the old Hollywood, it was more glamorous because we didn't have all this competition for entertainment. Things are diluted nowadays. It's you true. Can get, if it was a goon from get some... their circle like geeks and gamers, they would have liked it. <laughs> but because it's Kimmel, yep. they have to pretend that it's offensive. Yep, exactly. Exactly. No, I, I never... the, the, the fact is that a lot of people watch this shit, and this is guys in their bedrooms talking shit about comic book movies in front of toys, and they do have a lot of prestige. They do get a lot of attention. The Oscars compete with these guys. That's why these guys are talking on Pierce Morgan. But it's not a it, it's 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 not a one for one. The Oscars is a multi billion dollar award a board sorry for a multi billion dollar business. These guys are little leech barnacles suckling off of the people who might have fatigue from a different multi billion dollar business. Yeah, and it's not even they they pretend that it's the fatigue, but it's actually just that their politic they have to have their politics shoehorned into everything that they consume. That's what it's really yeah. all about. And and by the way, I noticed that Nerd Roddick didn't say shit when they were talking about Robert Downey Jr. because Nerd Roddick is a former drug addict that went to jail. <laughs> <laughs> and critical drinker, he's still an alcoholic. <laughs> I once felt like I was watching a glamorous event. It was almost like the magic had slightly disappeared from the room. Uh, perhaps never to come back. I mean, is is it that we know too much? About? Perhaps never to come back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, no more Oscars. They're canceling the Oscars. We'll never have another Oscars ever again. You know what? You know why? Because they saw this and they're like, man, we might as well give up. These people don't like the uh, the last Oscars. We've been found out. Critical drinker and Pierce Morgan knows <laughs> about these people now. That social media has drained any of the mystique out of Hollywood stars. What is it that's taken the magic away? Oh, I think you hit it right there. We we know them now. Mm. Uh, there used to, these used to be a, a an event, and this was the only time we saw these movie stars, and we didn't see them t tweeting about whatever politics all day long. So it was true. There was a novelty there. See, it's the it's the political thing. There was an event. If Eric uh, July made that RDJ Coke joke, Methrotic and Drinker would be howling, <laughs> <and> clapping. <laughs> <laughs> Methrotic here in America. If Donald Trump made that joke, they would be howling. Oh yeah, <laughs> or Eric July. Yeah, yeah. It was called the Gay Super Bowl. Uh, it was an event that you know. Yeah, yeah. He claims that the Oscars were called the Gay Super Bowl. I've never heard of that before. That's such a weird thing to call it. Hmm. Would actually sit around. I remember sitting around with my family and my friends watching. You know, as as you know, the first two Lord of the Rings films lost Best Picture, which they should have won. Uh, but like, that's when it was fun and things were good. As I said earlier, this is a <laughs> things were good. They got the Best Picture, didn't they? And for the third one, that the Lord of the Rings, I think the Return of the King got Best Picture. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure that was the third one, and it took it took Hollywood changing their perspective on what they give Oscars to. It took a couple of years. It's true. I'm pretty sure they end up getting their flowers. And by the way, they 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 complain about Oppenheimer being too long, but the third Lord <laughs> of the Rings was one of the longest movies ever. Like, like it felt like one of the longest movies ever. <laughs> the ending was just the ending of uh, The Return of the King. Not even the whole movie. Just the ending of The Return of the King was the longest movie ever. Yeah, the like five <laughs> endings of it. I'm like, yeah. all right, it's done now. <laughs> Not yet. No, fifth century model that I just think has had its time. And yeah, we, there is no, there are no movie stars anymore. There's no star that's going to fill the seats just based on their name. There used to be, but now it's, now it's the intellectual property. And that's even dying right now. So there. They're headed for a real tough time. Yeah, I mean, who are the big movie stars? I mean, I would still say Tom Cruise is a bona fide oh, yes. Wait, movie star. He's from a different era. Well, I wouldn't call him one yeah. of the great actors. I think he's one of the great movie right, stars. Right, right. Yeah. Well, right? I mean, he's but, from a, he's from a different era. But that's the thing. Like, then well, I would say Ryan Reynolds and Mark. I think he's a good actor too. Like, I can't deny his talent, even though I think he's a psycho. He's still good <laughs> at everything he does. So. Yeah. Yeah. I can overlook he, the he, fact that he's crazy. 
his work in Mission Impossible is impressive. All the stunt work he does, like he's a great, he's a great actor, great talent. Um, I will, I will, I will actually. <laughs> I can't look. I look down on him, even though I know how fucking weird Scientology is. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Go Robbie, you know they uh, get people to the. Ryan scene. Reynolds no. is a movie star, and she is definitely a movie star. I think. I think the general thing is the sheen has worn off of Hollywood because we know them now because they're so overexposed on social media. We know their politics. We know how they fundamentally look down on a lot of people, even if they don't feel like they are. So culturally, people have just disengaged. You know I know who we don't know about. Them. I'm pretty sure we've always known the. Their politics, usually, anyway. Hey, this is Jeremy yeah. from Neurotic, and today I am going to talk Disney and the MCU for the 100th time. But before I am going to complain Star Wars about having too many Mary Sues. But first, this video is brought to you by Raid, Shadow Legends. Yeah. <laughs> what a turd. What a turd. Business is only good if everything else is bad for this guy. Fuck him and fuck Pierce Morgan. Pierce Morgan got kicked off of national TV, has a web show, and just leans on whatever web drama he can. He does relevancy. now. Yep. But you know, hasn't he's given no television interview in forty-five plus years? Jack Nicholson. Fine. Well, exactly. And the reason he doesn't is he refused. I've tried everything. The reason he doesn't <laughs> is that he he believes it kills the mystique. Yep, absolutely. The people shouldn't see the real you. Yeah. I mean, I could see you at a, at a sporting event or something. He goes to the Lakers. I'm often there looking at him, trying to book him across the court. But he doesn't believe in doing interviews about himself no, he's, on com he's completely right. You know, when you, say, when you say they're overexposed, though, they're not also underexposed because the politics that they do give away is very controlled and it is quite controlled. Well, no, because, the so thing, because you have to look at it from this perspective. You are a movie star. You're worth millions of hundreds of mil millions or hundreds of millions of dollars. I don't want to know your opinion on politics generally because we don't live the same type of life. No, but they live in the top sure. 1%. They can be advocating for whatever they are but for us it's condescending because wait you 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 pr played pretend on tv and now there's been there's been celebrities that have made their politics known for a long time this isn't a new phenomenon um i mean like yeah. J jane fonda won two oscars and she was very politically active yeah this is just people trying to rewrite history to benefit their position and the fact that hollywood is 100 percent well not 100 percent, but it's very much the other side of the political spectrum as these people are so they want to try and downplay they shouldn't be so political if your side was winning in hollywood you'd be like hell yeah tell yep. them hollywood you think you have extensive knowledge on politics? I, really I appreciate you that when, you, when you're when you seeing someone who is living like a billionaire's lifestyle and they're talking about climate change, it's frustrating. But then if you look at someone like Angelina Jolie, who spends a lot of time with the what UN, about. is that not more interesting? You, we know you for playing pretend. We don't know you because you're a doctor or a chemist or anything like that. Then you get like offered that. a platform, you know? Well, you but, that, but that's the thing. Don't, but don't abuse heads. your platform by You know my problem that with that? Let me, let me bring a critical drink into this debate because I think my problem is I... It's fine if you want to use your platform as a movie star to opine about world events, fine. But what you can't be is deliberately, obviously ex excluding to ones that are just a little bit too uncomfortable for who your bosses might be. And I yeah, really YouTube felt- YouTube movie reviewers can do that for the other side? <laughs> <laughs> hey, fuck this, fuck this. About this award season is that actually, I don't want them pontificating about politics particularly at all. Um, but it's been really noticeable, like I said earlier, that absolutely no star in Hollywood at any awards event has made any comment about the Israel-Hamas war. Uh, and that, to me, has been really noticeable. And then it makes me think... Because it's a very divisive topic. Uh, yeah. I mean... Well, how genuine and sincere... And you, and you really can't make a comment at the Oscars that can win over either side. <laughs> right. <laughs> have been their previous pronouncements about political issues, like Donald Trump, like whatever it may be. If you're not going to go into the more difficult one, because it might harm your career in some way, because you see people getting cancelled, I, I think there's a real like, exposure of a virtue signaling mentality there. I think so, yeah. With the Israel-Hamas thing, it's a much more divisive issue where people are generally split down the middle. If it's Oh, wow. I actually... See, see, he, he split down the middle. I had to, I had to look this up because I wasn't a hundred percent certain. I heard something about it. Mark Ruffalo, who big Hollywood star, yep. star of Poor Things, he wore a uh, pro-Palestinian 
a ceasefire pin at the Oscars. And other celebrities wore the pins. So even though they didn't have the ability to speak up and uh, talk, talk via the microphone, there was still political representation there. And you could be talking about this right now, Piers Morgan. You could be making this a thing. But you're choosing to say lack thereof rather than find where there was it's true. political commentary. Yeah. It was just subtle. They didn't use their acceptance speech time to talk about it. They just wore a pin or whatever. I don't even know if he had acceptance speech time. I wasn't able to watch the whole thing. The only reason why Hollywood makes woke content is because it's profitable. Paraphrasing the 34th and 35th Ferengi rules of acquisition. <laughs> there you go. Woke is good for business. It is. Woke is good for business. Yeah, I... you're also <laughs> you're also forgetting that there is propaganda made sometimes and people will fund it. So it, it doesn't it's not always good for business. You know, it, it, uh, as an aside today, Chuck Schumer uh, basically came out and said, we need to get Netanyahu <clears throat> out uh, as president. Oh, really? Of it. Yes. Chuck Schumer, you know, a, a high ranking Democrat politician who's Jewish was like, we're yeah. done, like, get rid of Netanyahu. So that's and, Amy Schumer's uncle. Like, you know, I think Donald Trump is the worst president in history. Whatever. That's a safe thing to say in Hollywood. You know, nobody in the industry is going to. Yeah, but that's um, my point. It's the same thing to say in that. Hollywood, but it's actually, it would be very divisive. I mean, I remember when I was at CNN debating gun control, for example, and it would get very, very heated and blew up a few times. Yeah, why don't you debate gun control with Nerd Roddick really quick here? Um, but I would have See big what he Hollywood about stars it. who would agree to be interviewed and then cancel. I won't name them. Because they say, look, Piers, I'd love to come on, but I would probably have to agree with you. And I'm a movie star, and a lot of my business is in middle America, where they love guns, and I'm just not going to uh, alienate half my audience. And I got, I, respect, I got that. I respected that. Um, but what I find it hard to respect so much is that none of them are prepared to put their head over the parapet when it's a little bit too controversial. The only way you know, to controversial. stop a bad Jewish guy from committing genocide is a debatably good Jewish guy. There you go. I, <laughs> I mean, I mean Ch uh, Chuck Schumer has his issues, but, you know, I, I, I'm more politically aligned with him than a lot of... Uh, people in our federal government so but he's another super old guy at the top of our federal government too uh, that was a that was a hot take <laughs> from that dono <laughs> i'm like holy that. shit <laughs> mentioning to their careers well absolutely yeah and it's almost like they don't really care that much about any of this, this stuff they right. want the superficial veneer of being concerned about these things and being virtuous but yeah. only so far as it helps their career and it allows them to toe the party line in hollywood uh if it goes against that they they will drop that like a hot brick of course they will because it doesn't help them then it's about appearing to be good it's not about actually doing anything good I think, I think you've touched on a good point. Are they willing to make sacrifices for what they really believe in? And that's the thing. They, if you told all these people, these celebrities virtue signaling about climate change, actually, no more private jets for you, they would shut up mm. tomorrow. They're not willing to sacrifice anything. Talk is cheap, and you never see it more. But than not just that, even with Israel Gaza, as Piers was talking about there, you know, you look at Bella Hadid, <clears> and she's lost many modeling jobs because she yeah, has Charlotte been explicitly yeah. contrary yeah. Palestine. Yeah, so, and, you know, off the back of that, I think a lot of people are frightened, and that is cowardly. Well, it's, but this is the thing. So they have no convictions. So if you don't have any convictions about things that can actually cost you, why do you talk about anything else? Mm. Shut up. That, I, do, I do think there's a point there. Not you. No, I, <laughs> I heard it as we <laughs> so. No, 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 no I, I, Shut up! I just think the smart ones, you notice, just don't talk about politics very much. When did yeah. you last hear Tom Cruise make a, a speech at a, an award ceremony about anything political? He's a Scientologist. Exactly. Yeah, no, I mean, no, no, no. <laughs> he, is, you know, he doesn't... Like, he'll make... He'll, he'll preach Scientology, like two other Scientologists, or if he's interviewed about it, he'll he'll be honest about it, but he's Pretty not going... looks like a skinny Sargon. He already Very had, much. like... He already had, like... Yeah, I said that earlier. They have the same beard pattern and everything. But yeah, he's he already had a PR nightmare, like, what, like, 20 years ago with all this shit. So he doesn't want to go back into that. When he was jumping on Oprah's couch? Yes. Yeah. 
Is he is, but when did he last talk about that? that when did he reduces. last talk about that on a stage at an award ceremony? <laughs> exactly. He doesn't. He doesn't. Yeah. Right. Okay. A lot of them have their weird little. We don't need geopolitical on. opinions from movie stars. We need geopolitical opinions from guys angry at comic book movies. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, skinny Sargon. At least to which, Scientology. But he doesn't talk about it at award ceremonies, and I think that's right. right? I just think yeah. once you do, you've got to be consistent. It's like all the people who have been, you know, very, very uh, angry, pro-Palestinian, anti-Israeli, but said absolutely nothing after October the 7th. Nothing, yeah. right? Sorry, can't respect that. Mm. I do if you said that was horrific... And by the way, I think what's happening now is, but not when you're selective in your moral outrage. Yeah. Um, let's just let's end on a happier, lighter note. We've come up with oh. the Piersies. Well, I haven't, but my one of my producers, Paul, who has a, a cringe, a inflamed, if not crazed mind, has come up with the Piersies. Um, so this is just a series of quick, quick, quiet questions. I want answers from all of you. They're pretty straightforward, but they do reveal a mindset. I think about you, your character. Uh, and your view of movies and how they impact on, on life. So there are various nominations in each category. The first one is the best James Bond. And let's start with you, Critical Drinker. Connery, Moore or Craig? I go with Connery, you know, because <laughs> some women just don't know when to leave it alone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, did, did, was it Connery, Moore or Craig? Ro yeah. Was it Roger Moore? Yeah, <laughs> Craig, Craig shouldn't even be on it. Pierce Bronson See, should be on it. I think there's so many options here. I I like Daniel Craig as an actor. Uh, I don't watch James Bond movies really, so I have no opinion on this. Moore was was the was the Bond when I was a kid, and the, and then okay. and then Morgan uh, or uh, Bronson came later. Uh, yeah, I remember Pierce Brosnan when I was. Uh, a, basically a kid i think roger moore i didn't pay attention to i started paying attention during the brosnan pierce brosnan thing my grandma thought he was hot so uh i think that was part of it richard I mean, Graco was my james bond <laughs> what <laughs> looks good license was it if looks could kill was that the movie well there was, was like license a, a to bond kill knockoff there was license if looks could kill oh i've yeah, never it, seen that it, 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 it was it was not James Bond. It was a high school kid that became James Bond on I a see. school field trip. It was a fucking it was a corny little kids movie, but like James Bond. I see. But that was what I was watching when I was a fucking kid. Connery, it's got to be as a fellow Scot. I have to support him. I knew I, he would pick the Scotsman. I think he embodied the the masculinity of Bond, yeah. the danger, uh, the menace, mm. and the the cool intellectualism. All yeah. of those things were in perfect balance with Connery. Andy no. wasn't afraid to hit a woman on film. I like that part. Whack. Adronic? Connery. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I agree. I grew up with Roger Moore. Yeah. Yeah. Roger he's Moore was James Bond. Yeah. Yeah. He is. He he seems really awkward. Here. He's got he's got his arms covered and he's just very just, Connery. It's not even up for debate. I grew up with Roger Moore. But it's Connery. Okay, but goofball. Connery was the more accurate, the better Bond. Okay, Ava? <laughs> Don't ask me. I'm not good on Bond. It was a <laughs> film for me. It wasn't a film for even, me. Even oh, Bobby, when I was a a you get your British card revoked. <laughs> you and Daniel K Craig went all drippy and, and wokey. I was yeah, a, you know, I'm a pride and prejudice little women kind of girl. I go for the, Come yeah. Come on, the girl. girl. Get a hold of your shell. Don't be so shellfish. <laughs> you need a new shellfish. smack on the ash. Shellfish. A new on the earth. I love Sean Connery's uh, role in the first Highlander movie. I, I like he's he's so good in that movie. Like those movies are so bad, but it, it, it was kind of cashing in on the barbarian trend in a way. And I th that first Highlander movie, Sean Connery's character is pretty awesome. But he also I wonder if you compared. Oh no! Go ahead. Go ahead. I wonder if you compared Sean Connery's late film work to Marlon Brando's late film mm. work. Who, who had the better stuff? Because they, they they got a little weird in the end. They, they did some interesting stuff. Yeah, he did that one movie where he played King Arthur. I think it was Richard Gere as Sir Lancelot. And it was like the love triangle between, you know, King Arthur, Sir Lancelot, and Lady Guinevere. That was a really weird movie. Uh, yeah. Early movie. You can go and see them now. Bond's not allowed to seduce women. Dragonheart. You ever seen Dragonheart? Sean Connery. He I played did a, see Dragonheart. I yeah. am the lost one. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, it's, it's it's that, you know, he gets arrested now. There we go. And I'll he can't the, shoot villains. I'll tell you what, I'll love the first few Melbourne. Like that. Uh, uh, definitely Connery. <laughs> Craig really? it for me when he started crying. See, I'm going to say more because mm-hmm. I was when I was young, uh, I was actually, people said, I look, I look like Roger Moore. Uh, 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 <laughs> they were they were lying. <laughs> what a narcissist! Yeah. What a what a complete. I'm gonna say more because when I was young, people said I look like him. You fucking goon! You goof! Pretty sure Roger Moore was the only gay guy to play James Bond that that we know of, anyway. Huh? Pretty sure. Pretty sure Roger Moore was gay. I think. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, I'll look that up. Because I thought he was. And he also came up with the best line I've ever you heard. You both wrong. Uh, the best old actor laid work was Orson Welles. Ah, the French champagne. Oh, no, the French. <laughs> Maybe he wasn't. Maybe I'm thinking of a different James Bond. I, I guess there was a lot of... Um, so, Roger Moore went on the record saying James Bond can't be gay. But then there were a lot of rumors about him being gay. So I don't know. Huh. Well, um, he might have been in the closet, too. I think there's a lot more uh, blurred lines when it comes to sexuality in Hollywood. The casting couches are real on both sides. Yeah. And yeah, you were cl- like back in the day, you were closeted like Rock Hudson. He he was like a really manly actor, but he was gay, but he had to hide it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then he died of AIDS. I still think The Rock might be gay. Kevin Nash said he was, but I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> About uh, doing uh, sex scenes with Bond girls. Maybe he's gay like Vince is gay, where it's technically not gay if there's a woman there. There can be like 12 guys involved, but as long as there's one woman there, it's technically not gay. <laughs> it's possible. My theory is just that he still has a really great working relationship with his ex-wife. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I mean that can have. I mean they have a kid together. I mean that's healthy. Yeah, you know it's, that's- it's healthy. But but in my mind, I'm like maybe they're together in business because they just didn't work in love. But they still obviously like trust and care for each other. I mean, that's, that's that's that throws off this gaydar meter for me. She's also like ripped. She's she's a fairly masculine yeah. woman, you know. And I said to him, I interviewed him for my life story show, and I said, "What's it like? It must be really difficult, you know." And he said, "Well, Piers, let me put it to you like this." He said, "He said I used to always go up to whichever lady it was before we started filming, and I'd say before the the, the love scene, I'd say, I'd like to apologize in advance if I get overexcited." And then he said, and I'd pause and then say. And I'd also like to apologize if I don't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, a few more. Um, That's a good best idea. Godfather installment. All right, Critical Drinker. One. They were all. talking bad about Kimmel yep. and his humor. Yep. That's what I was just thinking. And they all laughed so hard at, at Pierce Morgan stumbling over an actor quote. Yeah. Fake laughing. Yeah. Uh, no one's going to pick three. Come no. on. Uh, probably two. Uh, just that balance of Pacino and De Niro in the same movie. Superb. Um, the, the time jumps between um, the, the 1912s and 1920s um, family. and the, the family. Present. Family. 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 Fam- Dungeons and Dragons. Ooh. You threw Did me you for a up? loop there. Day in the 50s and 60s. Wasn't ready for that. Great. Um, you know, seeing how Vito became the man that he was. Mm. Uh, fantastic. Like yeah. that, that. The dual narrative works so well in that movie. No Drodic? Part one, Marlon Brando. Yeah. Because of Marlon Brando. Yeah, he was fantastic in part one. And actually, I would add James Kahn, who's Sonny yes. Corleone, was yes. one of the great yes. characters. Never gets enough credit. Absolutely and that sensational. Ooh, so um, good. Okay, you two? Uh, uh, Fredo, Fredo, Fredo deserves credit. That man showed up in very few movies, and the movies he showed up in are huge classics. Hey, by the way, did you see the um, the Super Bowl commercial with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Uh, it was uh, uh, was that it was a State Farm commercial where where like he was doing the like a good neighbor. State Farm is there, and they're like, no, it's neighbor. It made me realize Arnold Schwarzenegger couldn't say the N word with the hard R even if he wanted to, <laughs> even if he was trying to. That's true. Make this man president. 
They should have changed his name to Arnold Schwarzenegger neighbor for for that <laughs> the, the commercials. <laughs> he, he could have been the Arnold Schwarzenegger neighbor. I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger, but I'm here for you. <laughs> have you watched them? I haven't watched the third one. I've watched the first and second installment. Uh, the Which first one? one because it had the most like memorable lines. Mm. You know Which one? I mean? First the, one. The first one, yeah. yeah. Christmas, yeah. very drunk, three. Oh, what? Whoa. Oh, no. My really God. drunk. Okay. Has ever I said love this woman. She is brave. She's dumb, but she is brave. <laughs> They prefer Godfather oh, that's 3. <laughs> that's literally... <laughs> that's, 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 that's like saying, do you prefer Chateau Latour? Is that like saying you like Back to the Future 3 the best? Oh, man. Back to it, the Future 3. It it's a Western. Fun. It's a Western. Yeah, it was fun. But the second and third one were fine. The first one was uh, groundbreaking. Yeah. The second and third one were follow-ups and they were fun and they were they were the, were, were they one of the first times a blockbuster like that filmed Fast the sequels kind of back to back into the Tortu verse. Dude, oh. I would I think we might get a Fast and the Furious 13, but uh I don't know. I don't know. The Toretto verse is all Vin Diesel saying family like that just like the meme. I'd watch Shout out to the feet. No, Actually, I like a bit of leap from It's like a friend Greece. It's a conversation, you know. Yeah. Horrific. Um, All right, that's, that's horrific. Um, <laughs> let's move on. Best director never to win an Oscar. So the nominations are Critical Drinker, Hitchcock, Kubrick, Tarantino, Ridley Scott. Okay. I don't know what they're going to say. Anything but Kubrick. They're not going to say uh, uh, Tarantino because he's left wing. Right, and they can't they can't say Tarantino. Tarantino's career is still going, by the way. Ridley Scott's kind of is too, right? Yeah, you can make an argument for these guys all being great, but I I, I think that the answer is Kubrick. <laughs> I don't think, as far as filmmaking goes, and the the body of work and what he did with films, I just don't think you beat Kubrick. I think Hitchcock, he he's the earliest one out of all those named there, right? So he comes yeah, from a different Scott. time. He was revolutionary for his time, you know? Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know he, who he I would definitely, pick. He definitely brought cinema up to a level. And then I think Kubrick brought cinema to, like, a level of calculus and, and uh, detail that was just... Oh, it was as insane as Hitchcock's methods were. Hitchcock was an abusive fucking director. He put his actors through some shit, and then Kubrick did the same, but uh, on every level. His detail was insane. Didn't Ridley Scott do the first Alien movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was a Ridley That's done Ridley Scott so thing. well for its time. Incredible Ooh. quartet of directors never to win an Oscar. Like during a time when everybody was just kind of trying to do like Star Wars ripoffs, like uh, the first Alien was was something different. It was sci-fi yet thriller horror, and you didn't really yeah. have something like that back yeah. then. Uh, who's the and one Alien who has been releasing sequels subtly uh, since it came out, right? Yeah. It has, it has, it's, there hasn't been that big of windows between alien type films. Especially if you count Prometheus too, you can add that in. Yeah, uh, you have to. Yeah. It's definitely alien. They're done. Are those four? That's a tricky one. Um, Kubrick is responsible for some of the most influential movies in the whole history of cinema. Um, but my my heart says Ridley Scott, just because I've I love Blade Runner so much. Um, and alien. Anybody with oh. toys behind them is definitely gonna lean towards Ridley Scott. <laughs> Fantastic movies, uh, so I'd, I'd go with him. Okay, Nedrotic? Kubrick, because uh, I mean Hitchcock is the easiest answer, but Kubrick is is a, a master, and he made and he made his Stephen King book better than the book. Okay, I'm gonna all say right. Now I'm rethinking my answer because <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to agree with him. <laughs> I don't agree with the way he said it, but uh, yeah, it's still weird. <laughs> Hitchcock. I thought Hitchcock, the fact he never won an Oscar was outrageous. Yeah, that's actually I think he did end up getting something, but not as director. Then they gave him a lifetime achievement or something. But he, he just, I mean, a, a, a masterful director. I was going to say Tarantino. But that also shows you how the m these 
awards don't matter. All these names are going to go down in history, whether with or without an award. Uh, Jeremy, a lot of this, a lot of all these strong female characters. Also, Jeremy, <laughs> Alien is amazing, and I love Ellen Ripley. So my question is, and someone will have to look this up. Out of all those directors named that haven't gotten, you know, best director, how many of their movies got best picture? Because that definitely has something to do with it, right? Yeah, that, yeah. I'm just wondering. Yeah, I'm sure there was a bunch of best pictures. I can't remember. Did Eyes Wide Shut win an Oscar? I don't remember. I, I, I'm not. A, I'm not a big Oscar like follower. I know. Didn't uh, Gladiator win an Oscar? Or am I tripping I, about that? I, I think so. That was Ridley Scott, right? I'm. Was Gladiator Ridley Scott, or was it? I don't know, man. Kubrick never won Best Picture. We, Joe we, says, "Yeah, yeah, he he would know. Following. He he has like that analytical mind when it comes to like movie statistics. I think that's also why he likes baseball. He's he's very statistical, you know. I think that's I think that's why he's statistical about movies because he was following the stats of baseball growing up, hmm. and I think that I think that spread his analytical statistical mind out to everything. Yeah, Joe's really good at uh, just." And st stats. He's yeah. a stats guy. Not Greta yeah. Gerwig for you then, no? No, no. absolutely not. No. Absolutely not. <laughs> no. Have you got a? Do you even know? Yeah, no, I'm going, for, I'm going for secret option number five, Miss Gerwig. <laughs> oh. All right, best blonde bombshell. <laughs> uh, here we go. Critical drinking. They Marilyn. pick this woman. They pick this woman to be the buffoon. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's the she's the like libtard or whatever. You know. So, best blonde bombshell, which is such a weird category, and he's naming Marilyn Monroe. Or Margot Robbie. Or Margot. There's only two of them? Obviously, Marilyn Monroe is easily the more famous one. Uh, hey, to have someone whose career has been over for decades and still exists in the public zeitgeist as, as a, an image of beauty and, and stature for a woman status, the blonde bombshell, uh, the compared to Margot Robbie, who was the current it girl. This is not a fair conversation to have. No. Anybody is going to say Marilyn Monroe based on time, based on history, based on the presses 50 years from now. Maybe it's Margot Robbie, but we can't make that choice. We don't know. All we know is Margot Robbie is that girl now. Ooh. Oh, gosh. They act like that's a tough question. I've always got an eye for the classics, so I'm going to go for Marilyn. Yeah. <laughs> Nedrotic? <laughs> Marilyn. All the way. Ladies. The original. Margo, we share a bone structure. Yeah, yeah. You do? We share a bone Yeah, we share oh, You do. <laughs> Ava? I go for Margo. Yeah. I'm actually, well, as a deciding vote, I'm actually going to cast Margo Robbie. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Well, I go. think she's become the biggest female star in the world. Yeah. And, uh, and I like the fact yeah, that Yeah, Marilyn Monroe has been dead for 50 years. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm pretty sure Margot Robbie is the biggest female star in the world now. Yeah. <laughs> I, you could <can> say that. <laughs> also, there's a lot of brains behind the beauty. Yeah. That she set up this production yeah. company and that she's done. Her cultural like, impact pales in comparison. Yeah. Uh, now, if you're saying who's the better actor, I would say Margot Robbie. Marilyn Monroe wasn't really that great of an actor. Yeah. She she yeah, played but, but, one type of character, the like dumb blonde, in almost every movie yeah. she was in. Marilyn Monroe played Hollywood, though. She was the role of, of Hollywood. That yeah. was her. Yes. To this day, Hollywood, the ghost of Marilyn Monroe is, is Hollywood still. She's being cast in everybody's dream that goes to Hollywood. She's, she's at least a background character for every wannabe actor and actress. Making she's a part of the, like the lore. Uh, okay. Um, and she's alive. Yep, yeah, the last two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. hey, okay. And she's alive. Is she alive? Exactly. That exactly. <laughs> That's one point for uh, Cobra consent. That always helps. Which yeah. helps. Um, <laughs> all right, last two. Uh, best Rocky film. Uh, uh, the first one. Uh, the, is is this even up for debate? Uh, the you know, piercings suck. <laughs> so so the first one is a like is the best one, but. F for what it is, I like Rocky Four because the whole movie is like one long montage, like one like huh. two hour montage. Is uh, that the one with the robot, or was that that's Rocky the one with five? Dolph Lundgren? Oh, that was a good one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there have been six 
Rocky movies. So, yeah. Critical Drinker, which one? Man, this is a tough one because I love Rocky Six. I love Rocky Balboa. Mm. I think that's such yeah. a beautiful. It was cool. Like, it, it, I mean, we're kind of seeing that now with Mike Tyson coming out of retirement to fight Jake Paul this summer. Yeah. Uh, so, it's interesting. But uh, in in Rocky Balboa, he comes out of retirement to fight the current world champion. Jake Paul's not the current world champion, <laughs> so it's not exactly the same. Yeah, wasn't wasn't the the world champion the current world champion? Wasn't his name Mason Dixon? Yes, he was a black guy <laughs> named Mason <laughs> Dixon. Who else would be on the Mount Rushmore of Hollywood? Ah, uh, the Mount Rushmore, Rushmore of Hollywood. Hollywood. Like, are we talking classic Hollywood? Yeah, because like, it would be like are we talking all time. Classic Hollywood is, uh, it would be like James Dean. He'd be on there too. You think? Like, yeah, I, th- I, th- I think, I think to be fair, the Mount Rushmore of Hollywood would have to all be people who died tragically. He uh, did. Young. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, I think you really have to solidify it with the young tragedy. And I, I, I can't, I can't. You, it's you tough. can fight to put anybody in there, but yeah. it's, it's, it's way too much to talk about way too much if you weren't if you weren't going for that tragic you know someone put john wayne i think sean connery would be uh someone you might talk about but then marlon brando i think deserves to be there. like He's tony curtis <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's there's the conversation's way too deep i want to know uh fat rushmore john candy john belushi chris farley we had the uh, all-time fats <laughs> private show that one yeah. time way to end yeah. the series and it really redeemed it after rocky five but it's probably going to have to be rocky one realistically it's just got the absolute magic yeah it'll never be replicated okay no drawing the, the the thing about rocky one is it, it was still a happy ending even though rocky didn't win spoiler alert he didn't <laughs> win he because no one had even gone the distance with apollo creed and he was supposed to be a bum of the month basically to lose yeah and that yeah, that was spoilers. the whole story yeah, yeah. Spoilers about Rocky won. Rocky didn't won. Yeah, he didn't. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they made Rocky 2. I, I know people that think they shouldn't have even have made Rocky 2, but they had to like, they, there was so much money in it, they had to make another one. So they're like, oh, it's the same movie, only Rocky wins this time. Yeah. Yeah. Rocky 3. Wow. Okay, Rocky 3 is cool because it has Mr. T and Hulk Hogan in it, but it's what it basically is is it's the same previous two movies rewritten and having a different like opponent besides apollo creed yeah this is toy boy this is a this is a hundred percent toy boy opinion mr t all, all these guys calling uh liberal men soy boys i'm gonna start calling the alt-right goofball anti-woke men toy boys they always got a toy wall of toys boy. behind them What's your prediction the of the way. fight? Pain. Yes. <laughs> Love that. I, he was a great character. I mean, so was Dolph Lundgren in four. Um, yeah, was, was a good. great day. Oh, man. He he was actually, like, scary. I remember that was... I didn't see any of the previous Rocky Rockies. Four. This time he fights communism. Huh. That's, that's <laughs> what happened. Yeah, and it was still... The Cold War was still going on then. I remember seeing it in the theater. I didn't see the previous ones because I wasn't old enough to see them. But four I saw in the theater, and it was scary. And it was scary. He kills Apollo Creed, you know, in the ring. Yeah. And that was insane, you know? R.I.P. Yep. And then he... Yeah, and then he actually... The actor just died like a month ago. A great villains. Yeah. Um, Got a nice stew uh, going. That's not my thing. Not your thing? No, not your thing. No, not your thing. I'm scared to keep telling these men, but I, I hated Rocky. I'm so Never sorry. I'm so sorry. So- was going to binge them this weekend, but knowing that Rocky doesn't win the first <laughs> one, I just don't see the point. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Hey, <laughs> Rocky. What is so wrong with sorry. you? Come on. Why are you like this? I'm being too. Why are you like. I like how she's as lame as possible. Like, she doesn't even like the Rocky movies, you know? To be honest, I'm so you sorry. You love Godfather 3 and hate one. Rocky. I mean, there's something. <laughs> she is wrong the hero of this story. <laughs> uh, I would say this about the Rocky. Uh, I, I, I once watched the first four back to back in the Uckfield Picture House. Uh, cinema in East Sussex on the south coast of England uh, took about six and a half hours. One of the great six and a half hours of my life. Um, but gave me a great chance to watch them in sequence. 
And what, I was, were there like a bunch of sailors that you were blowing in the in the back of the yeah. theater or something? And then he capped it off with an orgy during a Rocky <laughs> Horror Picture Show. I, I still maintain that two is. On they did Rocky Horror Picture Show at Comic Con. It was kind of cool. Underrated. <laughs> two is well. underrated. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, and yes. obviously ends the way you want it to end at the start of the first one. Um, Rocky One is the most beautifully made film and thoroughly deserved winning Best Picture. And of course, it's an incredible story that Stallone turned down millions to turn down playing the role. And let somebody else do yeah, it. Yeah, they didn't like they didn't want him to play Rocky. Uh yeah. They wanted to pay him not to be the actor. But he said, No, I'm gonna be the star, and that's it. And it made him what he is. Um, but I'm actually gonna go with Rocky Balboa, the sixth one, because it was twenty no. years after the last one. I mean, it's I it was surprisingly good. It was at a time where it was like, you know, Har- Harrison Ford made the the uh the Elijah or no, no what's his name? Shia LaBeouf. Skull. Yeah, yeah. He made that one, and I'm like, oh, shit, and now they're going to make another Rocky. But it was surprisingly good for what it was. You know, I don't think it compares to the original four at all. Rocky. And then five is like a one we try to forget because there's like. <laughs> that. That's the one with the robot, right? <laughs> uh, it, Yes, because because they're all super rich. I, I can't remember. Like the robot is like there. His son had a robot. Yeah. <laughs> um. The, like at the, at the beginning of five, they're rich, and then his brother in law like loses all their money somehow, and then they have to be poor again, and then they move to like the hood. <laughs> and it's fucked up because that whole movie was about like Rocky being more of a father figure to Tommy Morrison's character than his own son, and then in real life, it, it was his real life son playing his son in that movie too, and he died. Um, yeah, it, which is crazy. Yeah, it's sad. Yeah. Five, which no one's mentioned, was a the sort of terminal disease. It was the only Rocky movie that didn't follow the formula. Like, there wasn't, like, an, an objective antagonist until, like, like the secondary protagonist became the antagonist. And, and there wasn't, like, this big, like, boxing match. It was, like, a weird street fight. Street it was fight, dumb. Yeah. yeah. It was dumb. Actually, of Rocky films, one of the worst yeah. things I've ever watched. But in Rocky Balboa, what I love was, I've got three sons in their 20s. The scene in the street when the spoiled brat son, which none of mine have been, but when the spoiled brat son finally winds up his dad enough that Rocky has it out with him in the street, and he, he does that speech about life is not a bed of roses, it's tough, and it will beat you down if you let it. And uh, if you want to win in life, it's not how many times you can hit, it's how many times you can get hit and keep moving forward. That is one of the great speeches in movie history. So for that alone... The polar opposite of the Barbie speech. Correct. Thank you. The <laughs> absolute antithesis of everything Barbie stands for. So I'm going rocking Oh, Bar- you, mean, you mean a movie catered towards men in boxing persisting with getting hit is the polar opposite of a movie where women are saying we've spent so much of our lives taking hits yet keeping going? She's saying she's tired of, of taking hits. That's part of the, the the woman's struggle is that she takes hits. And you know what? Women don't get to be the champions that men do for taking hits. The hits women take, they, they, they get rewards for that generationally when their kids grow up and the sacrifices they made are big. Men get the rewards in the moment when they take a punch. That's this we men and women. We get our flowers. We demand them. Women have to wait till Valentine's the, Day. The movie is literally based on the true story of a guy who was probably the best ever at taking punches. <laughs> and, and, and they made a movie about him, even though he lost and got his ass kicked just because he didn't like hit the canvas he became famous that's crazy about the sixth of the franchise it was like it wasn't close like like as far as landing <laughs> strikes ali was destroying this guy it was unbelievable yeah. how he didn't like get knocked out because ali was knocking people out all the time so that's crazy yeah a final question probably the most significant actually in terms of your character the critical drinker do you have your popcorn uh, sweet, salted, or mixed? <laughs> Whoa, that is a tough one indeed. Mm. Um, I'm going to go for salted because I prefer salted stuff over like really sweet things. Same with my cocktails. I want bitter cocktails instead of... Oh my God, I thought he was going to say something else. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
sweet ones. Wow. A so, little bit salty. too much information at the end, but I'll take it. Uh <laughs> did he think? Uh, I, did did me and Pierce Morgan just think the same thing, or what? Maybe, maybe. Uh, ah, all right, <laughs> uh, mixed. mixed, mixed, I like it mixed. Interesting, uh, yes. Salt, salty. Yeah, I thought yeah. you would be. Yeah, I thought you. Oh. You look salty. <laughs> oh. Yeah, she does. Salty little mixed. level. Okay. Good quality mix. Good quality mix. Yeah, I would. Yes. I'm actually salted actually. Okay. Yeah, nice. yeah. I like a the majority popcorn. of people are going to be salted popcorn. That's what the the traditional movie theater popcorn is. Yeah, but you I go to Chicago, you'll get a mix. I will say, at uh, in in downtown <laughs> Seattle at the Cinerama, they have chocolate popcorn, which is yeah. Pretty- the, the, you'll see the chocolate drizzle, the chocolate popcorn. You'll see the uh, kettle corn now. You'll see the the caramel and cheese mixture. There, there there's a lot, the popcorn. Actually, there's some. There's a couple of like restaurants that are just popcorn, like shops. Yeah, yeah, and they yeah. They have so many flavors. Yeah, yeah. I just uh, I watched this whole documentary about. It's called the what is it called the Sif now, which is weird because that's yeah. like short. That that's like another thing people call syphilis to like shorten it. <laughs> but Seattle International Film Festival. Yeah, yeah. It's it's the the Sif Cinema, but I guess they they've had chocolate popcorn for a long time uh i i didn't know that but is it chocolate covered or do they actually pop it okay let let me see i think i found a i'm pretty sure they here's here's like a picture of the chocolate popcorn right there yeah um i walked by there because like a lot of times i catch a bus that that like stops right next to it when i'm in belltown and you can look and see their lobby through the window from the sidewalk. And I saw them making the chocolate popcorn one time. So I guess it's a big the, deal there. I think the last time I was at that theater was for The Dark Knight. And it was like oh, wow. a uh, like a 2 a.m. showing. Cool. Uh, that's it for the Piersies. Thank you very much indeed. Great to have you guys on for the first time on Uncensored. Critical Drinker and Nodrotic, two hugely popular uh, guys on YouTube, and I can see Cheers. why. Thank you very much. And to Ava and Esther, thank you both very much. And uh, a final thought, really, that Barbie got what it deserved last night. Absolutely. The man had the yes. last laugh. <laughs> thank God for Ken. <laughs> thank you all. All right, that yeah. was something. Anybody who watched Barbie, I'm pretty sure enjoyed Ken just as much as they enjoyed Barbie. It's a movie, it's not a competition. Right. Making it a competition is super weird. Yeah, especially within the movie. Like, yeah, there's a competition, like, at award shows between different movies, but they're not trying to... Unless someone's, like, an antagonist in the storyline, they're not going to try to make you dislike them. Yeah, if you watch the movie, they're not trying to make you dislike Ken. Nope. It's it's not the... It's it's just not the case. Yeah. uh, But, But it did point out male fragility. And these guys are really showing male fragility in trying to make this an us versus them scenario. Yeah, I did. I didn't get that from the movie. I I kind of felt like it was po- poking fun at at you know like misogyny and extreme feminism. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, but these guys are on an extreme end of the scale, so they have to. Be mad they're getting a little fun poked at them and say it's against all men. No, it's about fragile men. And y'all happen to fall into that category. (laughs) All right, we're going to hop into the Cobra verse now. Here we go. Stand up strong Face the truth about themselves To understand what went wrong I know we can find a way I know we can find a way I know we can find a way Stand up It's amazing Stand up It's amazing Stand up
All right. Uh, this is the latest from Boglum Chronicles. Uh, hump Day e-begging stream with King Cobra JFS. Let's go. Ooh. One thirty p.m. Uh, we got a drink combo in the house. <laughs> We're going to add some harder mango from Mike's. Yum. We're going to add some orange mango sun-kissed. How does he do it? Some rum. Oh, by the way, by the way, before we get further into this, I'm in this King Cobra group on Facebook, and there's a guy in there that uh, lives in Casper, and he was at his his kid's school, like his elementary school age kid, uh, to see this presentation about the founding fathers. And fucking <laughs> Clint shows up as Benjamin Franklin. So he, Shut up. And so he like edited all the kids out and like shared this on the Facebook group. How <laughs> how would you react if you were just at your kid's school? And Dad of the Year walked in as Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> Probably just like this, you know, kind of like how I would react if I was somewhere in Anita Sarkeesian and walked in. I, <laughs> I wonder. I wonder if he went up afterwards and had a convo with him. I don't know. I don't know. Um, he, they, people were like, "What?" He was like, "Yeah, this is my this is my kid's school," and they were like, "Really?" And then I went to the guys. Facebook account, and he does live in Casper. That must be so weird to be a Cobra viewer and live in Casper. Is, I don't know. Is, is it weird that I want to creep around elementary schools now just to meet Cobra's dad? <laughs> Haven <laughs> coconut rum made with pure cane sugar and real coconut water. Listen to that heavy ass pour. Yeah. For a while there, I was trying to arrange a trip to Casper, like uh, for for St. Patrick's Day. We were gonna try to hang out with Cobes on St. Patrick's Day, but Jeff couldn't do it. So I was like, "Man, if you're not going, I'm not going." So it just mm -hmm. it just didn't happen. But maybe we need to figure something out because we we've, we've been talking about it for years. I guess I'm. It's just yeah. inevitable. I'm gonna have to go to Casper someday, which I'm like. It's a place I've never aspired to. It's fucked up that I would go to Casper just for this dude right here. But, I think it's a shorter drive than L.A. Well, I, I wouldn't drive all the way there. I would fly to Denver and then drive the four hours from Denver to there because then you're only driving eight hours round trip and then you're flying yeah. the rest of the way. And you probably would save money with the way gas costs now. I mean, I know gas gets cheaper. Yeah. Hey, Ben, but... this is Anita Sarkeesian. Oh, Stop no. Stop stalking me. I know you oh, followed no. me into that game shop. I was Jokes in there first. You. You'll always be an obscure right-wing podcast. I was literally in there first. Congratulations <sighs> on your uh, wedding uh, or birthday party. Wedding-themed birthday party, Anita Sarkeesian. Thank you. Oh, I thought you were talking to me. Oh, also on your wedding theme birthday party, Ben. <laughs> I was a beautiful bride. <laughs> what up, YouTube? It's your boy Cobra. We're just hanging out, doing our thing, thing. Having a drink combo. It's a mixture of rum, haven, and coconut with the mango orange sun kissed. Mm -hmm. I go live very often. I figured I'd go live tonight and. Uh, just hang out with you cool cobras. Better not go live, boy. I feel like if it, now that he can get super chats, uh, first of all, he keeps like forgetting to turn them on. They get turned off somehow. Um, Damn. You yeah. think he's got a mod that can do that? or I don't think so. Uh, it would have to be like someone. It would have to be like an admin, not just a mod. Like, an ad, yeah. like a channel admin that can delete and upload videos and all that shit. And I don't think he has those. Yeah, it's probably just a user error on his part. Hope y'all are having a fantastic hump day. Three days away from the weekend. Uh, this You're Saturday on an eternal weekend. 12 days. 
What's up, Deathbed? That's what's up. I'm just going to clear something up in the chat really quick. No, they, they, so like I could add someone else as an ad, I could add someone else's YouTube account as an admin on my account, on, on my channel, and they wouldn't have my password. They'd have their own password, and they'd be able to do pretty much anything except for like remove me. You know what I mean? That's, mm. that's how it is. Uh, 12 days since I've made the jar of wine. It'll be filtering day, that's for sure. And fuck my trolls, dude. Their obsession with me is seriously fucking unhealthy. These people are fucking deranged. And karma's a bitch, and when it bites these fuckers in the ass, it's gonna bite so hard and with no mercy. And when it does happen, it's like, you know what? You had the choice to leave Cobra the fuck alone. Or better yet, you know, you don't like Cobra, don't watch his videos. You had the fucking choice. This coconut rum is fine. Yeah, it's almost gone already. Here, YouTube, 21 and up. No, I don't want any pets. If That's I'm most definitely up. what's 21 and up. See now, I'm very happy about this. Now he's being like, uh, "If I lo he's still holding on to hope for Puff, and he's like, "But if I lost Puff, I don't want any more pets." So I I'm happy that he's at this point. I don't want any more he, pets. He might also be preparing to raise a kid. <laughs> uh, I, I hope not. <laughs> Thank you, Ma, for your five dollars. Andrew, my hat smells fine. Thank you for your two dollars. No, I refuse to let the trolls get to me. They are fucking losers, dude. I guess uh, King Cobra launched his cameo today, too. He has a cameo oh, that's now. that's money. Yeah. He's about well, to get paid. I yeah. wonder how many he'll not fulfill. Pro Can you get banned from the platform if you don't do it? I'm not sure. Hmm. I, I, I don't know if you can get charged back. I don't know if you have to like hit people's target points when they ask for certain things. I don't know what the exact rules are. But what if you take on... the money and don't do anything? Can that get you banned I, from the platform? I don't, I don't think that you get to keep the money if you don't give something. Okay. So oh, I think he has to at least be like, oh, I'm not going to say that in the video. And then, you know, something like that, maybe. Hmm. Thank you, Macy, for your $2. Z, thank you for your $2. We polish that off Bottle as of gone. Right now. <laughs> Didn't you open Someone that said, five hours ago? Yeah, if that's a five hour fifth, that's mm, that's good drinking. Yeah, he drank <laughs> he drank that like I would drink a bottle of wine, you know, like in one <laughs> sitting. But he but and he also booze. did put the he put the Mike's hard in it too, right? Yeah, the so Mike's that, hard mango. Yeah, so that diluted it a little bit. Well, it diluted it, but that's also the extra Mike's Hard alcohol he drank, too, on top of it. Yeah. So he had a fifth and a Mike's Hard. That's true. <laughs> and if you want to consider re helping me restock on my coconut rum, uh, hit the <laughs> like, super chats, you know, cash out, PayPal, whatever. In nicely tubes. Just gotta add more of Jessica's turbo yeast and some more and get cheese. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, Yuck. Yeah, he... uh. It was uh, Sargento cheese. He called it Serengeto cheese. <laughs> so there's Lucrane and there's Serengeto cheese. <laughs> two, they're on two completely different continents. Yeah. Yeah. Never don't have to, but it's greatly appreciated. And it is my birthday month, so I'm going to be celebrating all month. Hell yeah. It is kind of, it is kind of poetic in a way that he was born on the same month as St. Patrick's Day. So it's like one of the drunkest yeah. holidays. That makes sense. It's my it's my mom's birthday today. She shares oh, a yeah? birthday month with King Cobra. Happy birthday, Billy's mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's good rum, folks. I would if you like coconut rum, I'd highly recommend this. This is Happy 50th really birthday. Really good rum, comes. not a sponsor. You make 50 look like 75. Well, that's your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> you make 50 look like 75. People do this to Egghead all the time, too, because Egghead looks older than he is. He gets it all the time. Yeah, I was really surprised how young Egghead was when I yeah. learned his age. Yes, 
because he looks like he's pushing 40. Sorry, Egghead. And and he doesn't even look old. He just looks like a grown-up, you know? <laughs> Egghead just looks like a damn grown man. Yeah. Actually, only 33 or about to be 33, so you can get hidden from my channel. How about get that? Get blocked, troll! Thank you, Christopher, for your $2. All the Super Chats are definitely going towards me at the end of my... At the end of the month, or towards the end of the month, I'll be getting my, uh... Oh, holy shit. Goddamn, Dragon. Thank you for your $100 for Super Chat. He writes, balls! Yeah, because Cobra's got Baller. balls on my trolls are just little pussies. <laughs> Use it to yeah. buy a new toothbrush. Oh, my God. I Those did. are trolls. Yeah. But that's what's up. Oh, yeah, all the Super Chats I'll be getting at the end of the month towards my birthday and that will go towards me being able to take Jessica out somewhere nice to eat. She should be taking you out. Cobra, it's your birthday. <laughs> Put your foot down. You always do these gender relations rants where it's like, oh, I have to pay for the woman all the time, but if I want them to pay for me, I'm sexist. Go there, Cobra. Come on, stand up for your rights. The best idea is to get a girlfriend or a wife with the same birthday as you. So you can be like, Who, who's going to pay? Who's going to pay? You know. When he told her her pussy smelled like Wendy's, that is so <laughs> classic. She was sitting yeah. on his lap and he's like, your pussy tastes or smells like Wendy's. And she's like, what? <laughs> and then he denied it. Wendy's. He denied I saying that. <laughs> it's better than denying that you said you, she smells like cat piss. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Those two had a ridiculous fight. Uh, I heard right, about yeah, it, yeah. It was ridiculous. J Joshy, come eat this baconator. <laughs> Ooh. Nasty. You know, the real and laughing. I ain't going to have to hide you from my channel. But thank you for your It'd be like if Arby's had a Baconator, if you know what I mean. Donation. <laughs> Angie doesn't fuck with YouTube like that. Y'all are stupid. And here's a thought. Why don't you leave Walt and Angie out of it? They've done nothing to me but be my friend, and that's just... <laughs> yeah, Walt and Angie have had enough. Yeah. You guys have trolled them enough. I wonder if he, like, now that he's not single anymore... If he just doesn't go over there anymore, because he would go over there hoping Ellen was there, right? I mean, I mean, I I think that was part of it, but also uh, they did have some like weird relationship where he would go like give them stuff and they'd give him stuff in return. There was some symbiotic relationship there. I think they don't have a lot of money, and he was buying them stuff to look good to Ellen. You know, like I think he. he uh, <sighs> That's just my take on it. I don't know for sure, but that's what yeah, it seems maybe. like. Upsets you people because you don't have any friends. Jake, thank you for your two dollars. Your jawline is great. Well, thank you. This is all natural. I don't have any exercises that I do. <laughs> jawline exercise, like Jer like Jared chewing on the old old shoes for exercise. Mm -hmm. Isn't there a condition he has that causes the jawline to look like that? I, I, I uh, thought there was like an actual medical condition he had. Uh, I think there's speculation about conditions he has, but I don't think that that's confirmed or anything like that. Uh, Bill Rogaine, thank you for your 99 cents. Jessica, your snatch smells like Wendy's and I love your pretzel bum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> You shouldn't steal money, man. You should never steal. If you want something bad enough, you got to work for it. There you go. It feels better when you work for it. You want my honest opinion. Anything You haven't haven't worked in years? Does that mean he has worked? <laughs> if you put two he negatives in, that makes a positive. That's a double He's negative. He's a streamer. He's making big bucks streaming. Worth having in life is worth working for. That's what I say. Calix Prophet says, you have no experience working for money, dude. Not true. We saw him get fired from Wendy's. We we know based based on his history, he has experience. You have to have a job to get fired. He had a dishwashing job too. 
Uh, mm. So he's had a couple jobs. They just didn't last very long. You're going to impersonate King Cobra JFS. <laughs> and give the- You're not even the real King Cobra the JFS. King Cobra JFS, $2. Your obsession is unhealthy. <laughs> Dude. It really is. Dude. I'm going to have to ban you from my channel. As I stated in my sushi uh, baconator video, I hate sickos. Oh, yeah. He, he made a baconator and he put sushi rolls on top of it. And oh, uh, man. The, the Doritos version of Takis, basically, he put a yeah. bunch of those on there, too. More than I love Doritos. To hell with Aaron Wills. Thank you, Oddly Jump. Oh, yeah. That's his new, his, his new online nemesis is this disabled guy in a nursing home with like a big tumor growing out of his head. No. Yes. And I guess he might be a sicko too. I've seen rumors about uh, him being a sicko too. For your $2. Uh, yeah, that guy's a fucking weirdo. I didn't have to make a video response to get him to respond. I got him eating out of the palm of my hands. Hilarious. I forgot. There he is. Know. See? Dude's got a huge growth on his skull. This is Uncle Growing Fester. All these videos, I forgot to talk about how he's, he's got a festering he's tumor. Creating magic wands. How fucked up is he? Guy looks oh, like he's got his a channel got take, His channel got taken down. <laughs> Today. On Pi Day. <laughs> I did no such thing. They can all fuck off. Next food hack, boil hot dogs in Old English 800. <laughs> boil hot dogs in cheap whiskey? Is it old, no, no, Old English no, is old malt English liquor. Old English is malt liquor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, ironically enough. I was thinking of Black Velvet. Daniel, thank you for your... What would happen if you uh, boiled like some hot dogs or sausages in some Black Velvet? Would it... Does whiskey bo- boil the same as water? Uh, I, I don't know, but it's flammable, so that would be kind of yeah, not a good weird. idea. Beer isn't flammable, so you could boil beer. Yeah. But... $5. I was thinking about doing that when I was watching. Uh... I used to do beer bongs of Old English with a shot of black velvet in them. <laughs> yeah. Jessica could cop her bratwurst, so I'm like, I wonder if you could boil them in beer. That'd be Tasty enough, I'm sure. A crevice. I think I shit. gave you herpes, pal. Yeah, but thanks for your what? five dollars. I actually want to send Ozzy some of my tactical soap and see if we don't spice up him and Sharon's marriage a little bit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you want to talk shit? Ozzy has Ozzy, about Ozzy. as long to live as your liver cobes keep you baking. Wow, tactical herpes. One, Such you're a gonna get boy. banned from my channel. Fuck off. Bye bye. Put this in your four hundred one k. Thank you for your two dollars, uh, Carrie. Hey, Cobes, can you give me some tips on how to avoid being pepper sprayed by an of age woman? Oh, it's not that hard, dude. Just don't be a fucking creep. That's hard. Thank you, Meat Masher, for your five dollars. To go out, you don't go out of your way to be a creep. Just play it cool, man. You know, if you're coming on a little too strong, you're gonna get maced. Huh. Oh, your message got hidden. You know, don't have to talk shit. You can get hidden from my channel. Only fans is not going to happen. Thank you uh, for your $2. No, only fans if JFS. You gotta talk shit, you can get banned from my channel. <clears throat> gotta live for those sunny days, you know what I'm saying? That could be a song on my new album. It's called Sunny Days. Not, Nick and Laughing so many times she wants your baby. Oh my god. The fact that Naked and Laughing wants I'm aware of the fact that Jessica wants to have my baby and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Except for when it happens. <laughs> like 
I mean, he said straight up, like, he was just blowing loads into her. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ah. Oh, man. My yep. guy raw dogging it. Yep. Uh, perhaps it. when I'm in my clock tower dream house and I'm more in a more financial situation, then, you know, we'll see where it goes. If it even lasts that long, you know. <laughs> yeah. He literally was Sam, like, if we even last that long. Sam Hyde should build a clock tower dream house for King Cobra. I feel like he'd get his money back. Hmm. If he built a clock tower dream house and the Cobra had to live in it for one month with cameras and all the guests Sam Hyde wanted to bring in for one month, if Cobra could do it, he could keep it. I swear that would make like 10 times whatever it would cost to make a clock out to our dream house. Sam Hyde could just like buy a bunch of hookers and have them dress goth and just like send send them in on Cobra. Oh, man. A, a, a gothic hooker assault? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, like like was, seven the, or seven or eight of them all just coming at that, him at once. That would be so good. Oh my god! Clock Tower group home. Oh, you're hilarious. A Clock Tower group home. <laughs> Rude. What I do sexually with Jessica is none of your business. Uh, I don't have that. So I'm going to have to ban you for being stupid. My YouTube trolls are making fun of me because Toby Keith died of cancer. And he's one of my favorite country singers. So now my YouTube trolls keep going on about me having it when I don't. It's just fucking stupid, dude. My fucking trolls are assholes. No, I've not played RuneScape. I would be taking a dollar ninety nine from people to accuse me of cancer. I don't have any more alcohol to drink at the moment, otherwise I wouldn't make it a drinking stream. Oh my god, this, this paper censoring thing is uh, a little weird. Yeah, that is a net negative that Jessica brought. Uh but is I wanna... he smoking weed or something? I don't know what he's doing, maybe. I want to bring this up because someone made uh, Mike Tyson's punch out, but it's Cyrax versus King Cobra. You got King Cobra's <laughs> chair in the corner there. Yeah. <laughs> is that the Soda Popinski model there? Uh, yes, I think it is actually. I thought it was Bald Bull. It, it kind of looks more like Bald Bald Bull, but it might okay. be. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it is Soda Popinski because he's got a. Uh, the mead. Yeah. All oh, those teeth. Oh, That's he rude. got knocked out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I like uh, that. Someone should literally make that into a game. I would play it. If it didn't cost too much, not, I would buy it. Probably not that far away from being a game. No. It's a one-level game. And, well, there's so that. many Cobraverse characters. You could make like a good, like a decent size game. With that. Yeah, I, I was just talking about with that animation right there. They got most of the sprites. <laughs> it's like to, to actually turn it into a game. You could turn that into like a one level just based off of the stuff they already have. I but say you could you could fill it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, maybe Clint would be the Mike Tyson at the end or something like that. Um, yeah, who would it? But would you really want Cyrax to be the the main? Like, yeah, you gotta switch uh, that out, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you'd Maybe probably Puff want... is the main. Maybe <laughs> Puff is the main guy. <laughs> um, there. Oh yeah, let's Ooh. let's finish this. You shit yourself. Casper Wyoming's Puff out. Please like the stream, by the way, if you haven't already. That's very helpful. One like equals one angel wings. Ninety minutes. Nine later. minutes later. Oh, nine minutes later. Jeez. I fucking told him. I fucking told him. You think he had a J.O. Thank session? Thank you all for your generous donations to Super Chat. That definitely helps. There it is. All right. Um, I, I downloaded some of these videos. Let's see if there's anything good here. Uh, whoa, she, no, no, she's not naked. I was worried for a second there. 
But she is listening to copyright. Oh, she has another one of her. She is listening to music, which I'm going to I'm going to mute here. But she does another one of her like demonic flip outs. <laughs> She's going to break her electronics, too, right? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. OK. Ah. <sighs> Why is she she's hitting the laptop? I think so. <sighs> she's got a nice rug. What is this, her blanket? Is she she's throwing the rug at the camera? She's got a little bottle. She's got some icky sticky. She's gonna sip it. Is it some she's gonna spill it? <laughs> Now light it on she, fire. She is very much. Did she catch any of this from? <laughs> so she pours the cup, pours half of it out, then refills it to pour it out again. Yeah. No. Ah! Not, I'm glad. I'm glad I'm a, a good guy. You know, I can't. I can't I can't horn dog on my boy Josh's girl. That's his girl. <laughs> uh, we don't need the foot shell. She just did like basic instinct, basically, you know? Basic instinct. <laughs> like Wendy's. <laughs> Someone in the chat earlier said smells like Wendy's looks like Arby's. <laughs> you guys are evil. I think it's probably even creepier with the sound off, but yeah, uh, I here's, don't know. Let's see. Here's another one. She's always playing music. I don't know what she's. God damn, baby doll. Two shots. Fuck. One up, one down, baby doll. Fuck. Uh, yeah, two shots. Uh. It doesn't help when you've been drinking since a little lad, or you know. <laughs> a lad? Hold on, a did she just lad. did she just admit that she's trans or something? I. Yeah, it would be last for a woman, right? Yes. Yeah. So if she was a little lad at one point. I'm just she's saying. A lad. And that breaks one of Cobra's demandments. Uh oh. A lad, you're you're a woman. Please don't let anybody Too alter late. your fucking parts like they wanted to cut your tits off at nine ah! years old. Ah! I don't want to. Uh, yeah, I'm skipping. So, so she was a lad. Now she's talking about them wanting to cut her boobs off. I have no idea what she's talking about. Is this about. a trans conversation? I'm not sure. I'm disturbed Is, by it. I'm probably going to skip up. it. Is Cobra dating Keffels? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know this was Keffels. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I'm afraid to even, like, let's see. And I don't mean Tipster's that. Tipster's going to be pissed. But most, like, horrible sins. I'm just saying, like, what is Josh going to do fucking states away? What is he going to do? Is he going to... She is kind of horrifying right here. Yeah, and back there, too. <laughs> yeah, this, like, really, this extreme close-up. Send me tons of money to go get my own. No. So, like. Ah, fucking music. Literally all of you are like, yeah. All right, um. Is the music so bad here that it wouldn't get picked up, or is it? Still, I don't have know. You noticed it getting picked up before at this level of distorted. It, a lot of times, it still gets picked up. What? To take roughly three years. Oh. And it is not a coincidence that this is often how long. It oh, takes hey, Bali, Bali toxin exposures. <laughs> In the conversations on this podcast, me and my friends. I'm bored. Bjork, I'm bored. So this is like Bjork's podcast, apparently. I'm bored. And she's bored. Uh, don't play this bullshit to me. 
baby doll. If this is what you want to play me, oh, I will cut it all off. I can cut it down. The differences of the music. Oh, oh, you've been asked for how how long have you been famous, Bjork? You're like literally about to hit 70 at the fucking few minute mark. So What? Seven? No, she's what, like 50? I would say Bjork's probably like in her 50s. No idea. You're like 70 years old. Nobody's fucking interviewed me. Yeah, yeah okay. Bjork, I love you, but... She's 58. Same age as Mike Tyson, actually. But Mike Tyson... <laughs> they should fight. Mike Tyson's 57, but he's almost 58. Yeah. I love you, but I'm not gonna be... Oh, Josh likes this! Josh likes that! Well, if that's what Josh likes, then... Josh... Love it. Is she going to break her phone? Yeah, see, like, when I saw this before she went out there, I thought all of this was performative. Um, <laughs> sometimes it kind of still looks fake, but I don't know. She does seem crazy, too. It, yeah, it's, it's it could definitely be mental illness. Then, then he won't be with me, right? So shut the fuck up with your Demogorgon horse. Slot fucking shit. Yeah. So, don't play your fucking games against me, please, 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 please. She's also wasted too. We saw her porn shots over pouring them. She could change the podcast that Bjork is doing. Yeah, to a Bjork song. Yeah, she could. She thinks she can argue with Bjork into not doing her podcast well, i heard bjork struck her channel because she was playing bjork music really that's hilarious <laughs> the, the, her pure channel got struck and then she said that bjork herself struck it right it was right just, it got, <laughs> it's just a record but she thinks company. it was actually bjork she thinks it was actually bjork that, that gave her a copyright strike i'm not gonna fucking deal with it i'm not gonna fucking goddamn put up on that <laughs> And if you don't like what the fuck I'm saying, don't watch me. Don't fucking put me out there. And fuck you and fuck your mother and fuck her Demogorgon pussy. Demogorgon? What's Demogorgon? It's, uh, Stranger Things popularized oh. the Demogorgons. Oh. Huh. I think they come from uh, Dungeons and Dragons or something. They're the overall mood of hell. Your mother and her Demogorgon oh, pussy and all the so fuck cool. all shit that that fucking whore allowed and fuck you and fuck your mother and fuck any Demogorgon fucking spawn down that line of fuck all. Fuck you and fuck you and fuck you and fuck you and fuck you! So she has the drunken rage kind of thing too. Yeah. yeah. She is doing it over a podcast that she could just change. There was a spoken word. I don't want to say podcast. I don't know exactly what it is. No, I, don't follow Bjork I will that closely. not. I will absolutely fucking not. Nope. All right. <sighs> Let's see. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a long day. If we're a sight for sore eyes, think about liking the stream. Please like the shout stream. Out to, shout out to everybody who's had a long day. You're here with us. Like the stream. Yes. And we're almost at. Uh, we're we're over seventy percent. I think seventy five percent is a good position to be in to go into uh, Saturday's episode. Saturday's um, banger and, episode. And if someone out there who likes to be the hero, who likes to be the top tipper, if you want to go ahead and just finish the goal tonight, uh, I'll start next week's goal immediately. So just putting that yeah. out there. <laughs> There was, a, there was a bit of hype in the beginning. <laughs> on the ground here. I don't need this. What is going on, Ben? The worst. This is scary, Ben. She turned all white. 
it's like literally what, like, how how long ago are we responding? What is this yeah. like fucking what is that? Like, what are we doing? What are we doing? <laughs> yo, man, yo. I'm gonna get nightmares, man. <laughs> yo, 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 sweet boys podcast. What? Hold on, hold on. What? What did she just say? Is she mocking us? Yeah, I think she is. She fucking mocking us. She puts on this filter, goes into witch mode, and then casts a curse on us? Ben, I'm getting nightmares, Ben. What does she say here? Oh, sweet boys podcast. For real, the fucking podcast of the fucking for real. For real. Holy damn, I took her in the nose. I'm like, oh, I'm feeling it. Yeah. Yeah. I think she just cast a curse on us, Ben. What do you think their kid would be like if they had a kid? Um, I like to think it would just be like the reincarnation of Clint. <laughs> like Josh would have to raise Clint now. He'd be an excellent Clint's gymnast. <laughs> yeah. I'm skipping the music. Ah, oh, she just plays music for the rest of it. You know what? Now I'm regretting talking down on the white filter. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Man. All right. Uh, I got some more Cobra. I'm going to run to the toilet. I'll be right back. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Big Face Billy time. I am. Uh, I went and celebrated my mom's B day today. I sat down with my mama in her car and I played her, I believe, it's my finished album. Finished it yesterday. The recording. I'm going to go to mixing and mastering. Played it from my mama today. Gave her a birthday present that I didn't have to pay for because I already had the album recorded. I'm such a cheap son. <laughs> it was fun, though. I did that right before I came to do the show. Rushed home. Got on with you guys. I'm on an all time high. I had. Mama, the fridge time wrapped up the freaking album. Life is uh chilling like a rock star villain. I want to go uh to Casper, Wyoming. If we go, see maybe if Cobra will star in one of my music videos, give him a couple bottles of sh- swill, bag of swag. See if he won't rock out with me, man. That's what I really want. That's what I want for Christmas, guys. I want King Cobra to be in my music video. So if we go down to Casper, we have to make it happen. Someone someone suggested a GoFundMe to fund a Casper excursion. I don't... Last time that happened, didn't they have to bang Cobra when they got there? Yeah. Well, that GoFundMe <laughs> didn't even go through. There was like a benefactor that was really just a stalker. Uh, yeah. And then and then now made the hey, white make stuff. That white stuff come out again. Yeah. That's what we'll all have to do. Um, let's see what this is. It's worth Pork it. Nuggets. So I got me uh some G fuel. I finished off the peach rings one. I took out the Dragon Ball Z flavor, which I haven't cracked open yet, but I have this G fuel. It's called Hack and Slash. It's basically a powder, and it comes with a scooper. It's an energy drink. You take your scooper, and you scoop the powder out of there. And then you what is the hack and slash? Would it be like blood orange? At first, I thought you said hacky sack. <laughs> but it, yeah, hack and slash. That's like a type of game genre, I believe. Yeah, I wonder what flavor it would be, though. Like blood orange or hmm. maybe... Yeah, I'm not sure. I imagine, I imagine the Dragon Ball Z flavor would have dragon fruit in it, but hmm. you never know with these flavors that are not named after actual flavors. <laughs> it's either a shaker, and you add some water, and you shake it up, and you get an energy drink, basically. So Aaron Wills got his channel terminated. That is hilarious. I have no idea who the fuck this guy is. One of my fans sent me a link to the video to this guy's a total sicko. 
sent me screenshots of the shit he was saying on YouTube. I'm like, ew, dude. That's what you get for Shake fucking it. with Cobra, dude. You need to stop touching them kids and drinking olive oil, oil you sick bastard. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What's wrong with Who? drinking olive oil? Who's drinking olive oil? Who's doing that? What's he talking about? I guess about? the Aaron Willis guy, the guy that was supposedly touching kiddos, too. Oh. He got his t channel terminated. But I thought drinking olive oil was okay. I don't know. I, I mean, like, using it in your food is okay, but should you just be, like, drinking it like it's a drink? I, I think I know people. So I, I used to know like old people that would like take old Italian Sicilians like a shot of it. Right. Shot, it would take a shot of olive oil. Yeah. Uh, it was like a health thing. I went to I went to this weird party one time and there was an al an olive oil drinking contest that these two guys had. And then the rest of the night they tried to do shots and they couldn't get drunk because of all the oil <laughs> in their stomach. Interesting. Yeah. That's how you. That's how you win a spin till you spin. Yeah, it actually is. <laughs> and people were talking so much shit. The dude would not fucking let up. He made one video talking about me. I commented, "You think I'm a train wreck, but I'm more popular than you on YouTube." And the dude literally was trying as hard as he could to clout chase me, and it didn't work. Your channel got nuked. Oh wow! <laughs> I made a video tearing into him. And I said, this is the only video you're going to get, dude. I'm not going to respond to your shit anymore because I'm bigger and I'm more mature and better than you on YouTube. And all my fucking I'm YouTube bigger and more mature and better. Yeah. <laughs> Trolls were defending him because they're that fucking twacked in the head. Twacked. And I think it's hilarious because he got his channel terminated. Thanks, YouTube, for doing your thing. Doing your thing. So it's blue. Is that the hack and slash? I've never had G Fuel in my life. I've never had Prime. Like all these trendy drinks that people drink. The only one I've ever had is Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel, and that shit went out like they <laughs> got discontinued. So Yeah, well they paid you to have it, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The and, and that's really more like their competition with Rockstar. But uh -huh. it is it is along it is along the lines of like a gamer fuel competition, but the uh, I don't think I've had G Fuel or Prime either. But I, the G Fuel is like a, a energy drink powder, right? Like yeah, and then like there's two types of Prime. There's like the the there's the type that's like a Gatorade, and then there's the type that's like an energy drink. Yeah, yeah. Because they wanted to have one they could logically sell to kids, yep. eight year olds. Refreshing. All right, so there's that. There's. Uh, you know what? I did try Prime. I think at Costco they had a sample of it. Ah, so, yeah, they do have that there. I've I've never had it, but I've seen them giving out samples. Good of that. fun afternoon, fellow YouTubers. It's your boy King Cobra back at it with another video. Ha <laughs> ha. And we got a review. Oh, you know what? I, it, I already watched this, and it's really long and kind of boring. Uh, I, I've got something else to play, though. Do you remember G-Time Johnny? Yeah. He, he uh, got arrested? Yes. Uh, he started live streaming when the cop showed up to his encampment. It's crazy. <laughs> right here. on the mat for WrestleMania. First time ever sent a ring sponsor. I hate it. Oh, they really are doing it center ring? They've been doing that in Mexico for years, so I don't really have an issue with it. Uh, I mean, huh. whatever. It's it's usually just like a big blank space. So uh, Yeah, I'm, that'll be interesting. I'm pretty sure WCW had Matt advertising at one point. Um, I got permission. I got permission to be here. No, I know that. Yeah, he is a dog kicker, and I have little sympathy for him. I wouldn't him. know the combination to the game. Yeah, that's why we stopped watching him because he kicked a dog. Yep. I wouldn't know. That. Yeah, here comes some kind of law enforcement. It's nice to know he keeps the place the clean. You guys, need, you need to research that guy. He's complaining. Come here. Come here. Uh, now you're resisting a lawful order. So come here. Oh, they got the tasers out. Did you hear that? I haven't done anything. Come here. I haven't done anything. What have come I done? Here. Come here. All right. I mean, you guys are alive. They're attacking me. What did I do? Ah, look at him. Look at him, everybody. 
resisting. I'm not resisting. <laughs> Stop resisting. I'm not resisting. And that's kind I'm of the end. Resisting. It goes on for a little while great. longer, but like you can't really hear or see what's going on. Yeah. That was great. I, based on the way he keeps his floor clean, does the G in G time stand for Genesis? <laughs> Probably. Uh, Jared did say his dad was a hippie, so. <laughs> um, let's, I, I, I want you to see this next thing. I got to play this little intro. Essentially, 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 essentially. Uh, essentially bud this is somebody may you know the guy that makes the puppets i think it's the ripoff yeah. verse or whatever yeah. they they did one with uh with sturgis and he's like wet, he's like jerking it while watching an eric july video and and they use uh. ai to like you make their real voices say whatever they want and you can you can hear Eric July on Sturge's computer being like blah blah blah. Uh, like it's it's Eric July, but he's just like saying nonsense. It's great. Something something. I love Ooh, you, Eric. Shit. I'm the greatest. Blah blah blah. I'm the best. I'm talented. Notice me. Notice all me. Haters because they're jealous. Notice me, Eric. I'm a success. I don't use 3D assets. Blah blah blah. Something something. Bullshit. I don't use 3D assets. Blah blah blah. Something something. Eric, I love you. Blah, 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 I love you. The tractors are all jealous. That sap is too wet. That is too oh, wet. Blah, blah, blah. Something, something. Bullshit. I'm the greatest. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> how, how, how big has Sturgis gotten? Pretty big. He was, a little, he was the little engine that couldn't. And now, and now he's a puppet. Yeah, he's did, a puppet. Did you see the one where the guy made the 3D model of Sturgis and he was doing like a reaction to it? I don't recall. Um... Let me see here. Stephen Andrew seven seven naughty. All right, yeah, this one, uh, it's kind of funny. It's by this guy named Suit like, Yourself. Even, even when you try to make these weird three D models of me, you're like, hey Sturgis, how you doing, mate? Oh yeah, this guy's voice is kind of scary. I'm doing all right. <laughs> Just gonna review your review. This is terrible. Oh, it's terrible, is it? Okay. We're uh, reviewing okay, a review of a review. This is okay. great. Why? Whoever whoever requested this or if you did this on your own, get better. Nobody requested it, mate, and I am still learning the program, so I do hope I am getting better each time I do an animation. Each time I create something, I get better. Because LG, shout out to LG, by the way. I have no idea who LG is. 210LG on LG's Twitter. LG is his buddy. You YouTube. Shout out to LG. Can make better art than you can. Millions of people can do better art than I can. This wasn't a competition. Yeah, I like how Sturge's point is like, oh, well, I know someone who can make better art, therefore you shouldn't make art. It's weird. Do you see the do you see the perspective indent of the Ripperverse Studios in between his moobs? Yes. <laughs> yes. Killing it. I'm sorry you took it that way. This looks absolutely garbage garbage <laughs> oh, that's a shame because it was you this is my fan art this is my heart being poured out for you sturges you're fucking like the fan art he's obviously a little more lumpy in the art and a little more gray in the art but his beard is actually nicer in the art than it is in real life Eye is drooping. To be fair, I am working with a recent picture of you. That is oh. what I'm referencing. So Wrecked. I apologize Wrecked. if your eye is drooping. He does have an eye that's like Wrecked. noticeably lower than the other one. It looks that's, like he might have had a stroke. It's just what I saw and I create what I see. Fucking thinning white hair, bro. I don't have white hair like that. Again, I create what I see. Look at that big piece of dandruff Damn. over near his ear. He's got a, he's got a nice booger uh, piece of dandruff there. Yeah. That's, that, that's, that's an edible flake. Yeah. When I zoomed in, Ugh. I saw white hair. Have you recently dyed it? Uh, nowhere near this big. Are you sure about that? Because I've recently seen you, Tony the Frog throw a couple of videos you out a, there where you're lifting up your shirt and playing. He with definitely your nipples. has a pooch. Yeah, that is nippies. He's probably wearing a medium or maybe even a large when he should be wearing the next size up. This is like 
puffy pink titties. Yeah, it, these these images exist because we went in and got the old stream clips from Twitch. So I, Sturgis exists because of uh, drunken peasants. Yes, like, it was it was Hannibal that named him Sturgis, right? <laughs> yep. Oh, and by the way, uh, Seth sent this to me. Uh, put Sturgis' face on a grid that shows his eyes are crooked. His eyes are crooked. <laughs> this is this is this bothers me. Yep. Think I've got it right, but if you've recently lost weight, I can reduce your size. Just hit me up in the DMs. The shirt's fucking retarded looking. <laughs> well, this be would be fair, a great but... job if if this guy made fat, ugly versions of people in a 3D generator and then charged them to make them more like uh, beautiful. <laughs> Look, yes. I'll fix it, but it's going to cost you 50 bucks. <laughs> the, the shirt is an asset that clings to the body shape and your body shape. Well, <laughs> the shirt clung to your tits, but I can smooth that out a bit for you if you wish. Just hit me up in the DMs. Mm. Always here to help. And you gave him mm. short legs. Is this supposed to be a dwarf? Now, come on, Sturges. Did I give Oops. you short legs or did Oops. God give you short legs? And again, Ow. if we review the source material, these girls are 5'5". Five five. It looks like you're either just a tad taller because of the hair. Sturges is probably 5'6". Yeah. A good chance I, uh... he's about 5'6". If these girls are five five, yeah, I'd say maybe five seven, maybe, yeah, or shorter than them. And again, I think I've got the proportions right. But... <laughs> oh God! If I've missed something, if you want to help me, he's kind of like Jared in that respect, where he thinks he's this buff guy that's in great shape, and everyone else is a fat shit. And he he allegedly works out five days a week for the last year. He would not look like this if that was true, unless unless his definition of working out is like nothing. Is Jared smarter than Sturgis? In some ways, yes. Yeah, I think his motor skills are better than Sturgis's and like his comprehension. He, he's more articulate. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Create Ugh, a better weird. Sturgis. Reach out. I'm only a DM away. Or something. Is it supposed to be a dwarf? No, it wasn't supposed to be a dwarf. It was meant <laughs> to be you. So now we're making fun of dwarfs now? I no, I wasn't making fun of dwarves. You brought it up. <laughs> Um, I have made That's fun such of. a st false equivalency. We're making fun of you, Sturgis. Yeah, and you look We're like a dwarf. Fun of you. Yeah, you it, look like at, at best you look like a uh, a warrior dwarf from Lord of the Rings. That that dude was there. I can't remember the actor's name, but he was there with Elijah Wood and uh, Sean Astin. <laughs> the guy who played the like nice. head dwarf in Lord of the Rings. Gimli. Yes. Was it Gimli? I believe so. Dwarves. So we were against. Making fun of dwarfism. I've never said that I'm against making fun of dwarves. Where did you get For that real, from? We're saying you a short we're saying you're a short, dumpy fucking loser, man. I've already made a dwarf. This is that dwarf. <laughs> to you. So no, I wasn't trying to make you a dwarf. That dwarf is way more ripped than Sturgis. I was trying to yeah, do that an dwarf is jacked. Yep. Representation of you. Again, if I've failed, I'm terribly sorry. Reach out and help me make a better Sturgis. Again, SJW tactics at its best. Um, how is creating a Sturgis 3D model that resembles you and is not a dwarf an SJW tactic? Do explain. Yeah, I, I'm going to say the, the gray in the hair could be chalked up to the lighting of that photo. It could be. It could be. So maybe that is a little off. I do think he's a little pudgier than he is in real life. He's a little more of a potato here. He still is a little pudge fuck, a pink titty budge fuck. So it's, it's not that far off. But this is also not made to be flattering. Right. This is made to take the piss out of him. And it worked. It got a response. And the response to the response it's funny, shits down uh, his throat, too. Well, it actually doesn't work. But okay. So let's review what we've just gone through. Sturgis critiques. 
it's terrible and I've got to get better. And it's terrible and I've got to get better <laughs> because LG, someone I don't know, can do better art than I can. And because of this, it looks absolutely garbage. He doesn't like that the eye droops, which I can't help him with. You're born with what you're <laughs> born with. I can make it less droopy if you wish. He doesn't like the fact that he has white hair in the model, yet that's what I saw in the picture. I can darken it for you if you wish. He claims he's nowhere near as big as the model representation of himself. I beg to differ <laughs> with the game. I it looks like he could lactate. I can make you thinner. He yeah. also complained that the shirt was retarded looking. Now I can straighten that up a bit for you if you want. And he complained that I gave him short legs, which I didn't give him short legs. God gave him short legs. I was just doing a 3D model. Was he wearing his... shorts there at yes. the, the Comic-Con? Yeah, it was in Florida, so I guess it makes cute. sense. Yeah. Cute, Short bud, legs. cute. Again, I can make you taller. If you wish, just reach out. Tell me how to create a better Sturges. Let's make Sturges great again. <laughs> Seriously, though, Sturges. Big fan. Big fan. Huge fan. I'm so glad you noticed me. Thank you for noticing me, Senpai. I appreciate your feedback and I've jotted down notes. I hope that this video shows how I can address each of your critiques. And I hope that we can connect and together we can make Sturges great again. I've been told Sturges blocked this guy. Oh, oh what a shocker. <laughs> he doesn't want to be great again. Nope. No, uh, I think I think this guy also made this. There's a story about an old church lady. She had three sons that lived with her that was grown. And the youngest one was a felon <laughs> who came home on parole. And her nephew was a nigga named Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, the terrifying Soska sisters. Oh my god. So they all I, I, I see yellow flash. Is that supposed to be Rakeda in the upper right? I guess. I'm not sure, maybe. But, yeah, I think and then it, yeah, yeah. And made the trap. Dude, this is great. They were selling weed and boosting. They were scamming. They threw afties that were lit with people crying. They had And this is exactly what their stupid uh discord call streams looked like they'd have all these little windows on and they'd all be yes manning each other this is yeah. so meta that's rk outpost and that's how that they became the shady bunch the shady <laughs> bunch the shady yeah i have no idea who rk bunch. outpost is and i think i want to keep it that way Dude, the Soska sisters look so free. <laughs> they, they do. It's funny how, like, if someone they didn't like had, uh, like, incest material out there, they would be shitting on them. But because it's one of well, their... That's, trying... that's what they were trying to do to Riley and Mint Salad. Yep. They were trying to make up some stuff like that uh... about them. And they tried to corner them for it. It's like, wait a second. The people on your team made videos of it. Here's a, here's another cool thing. Welcome to Mortal Comics Gate. Yeah, Three, this is awesome. Two, one. Fuck them up. Young Clipper. Yo, Ripper. What did I tell you about leaving the <laughs> gates to the warehouse? So stop stalking me. <laughs> stop stalking me. <laughs> stop stalking me. They're what? in his warehouse. Yep. <laughs> Get out of my warehouse. Sturgis attack. Monetize my haters. Oh, it's Sturgis! <laughs> yeah. Monetize my haters. He crawls Sturgis. back up Eric's ass. <laughs> Motherfucker. Monetize my haters, bud. I have to see that again. I'm sorry. I have to see he that again. He runs and crawls back up yep. Eric's ass. Yeah. Look. <laughs> Sturgis attack. Monetize. He like farts him out. Yeah. Get back up Eric's ass, Sturgis. Motherfucker. I'm gonna shave you. Bunny uh, money. I'm gonna vaporize. Bunny, uh, motherfucker. bunny money. Uh, bunny money. Don't mess with the bunny battalion. I'm not reading your super chat. 
All right. You're going to get shaved. Shoulder hair tech. <laughs> you see, this is what they do. They come into your warehouse thinking that they can shave you, but I'm they don't know you, the Eric. power of the shoulder hair. You will apologize. Stop stalking me, detractor. It's clipping time. Hey, what the fuck it is? Motherfucker, it is. It is. It is, it is. He shaved him. Did you just rape me? <laughs> Did you just rape me? <laughs> what it is? Don't you what it is, me? Rip a it is. Oh, shipping it. Did they shave his beard too? Is yeah. How important it is. The horseman coming. <laughs> the horseman. We will winning. What it is. What it is. <laughs> this is what it looks like when you pull up. Surge's attack. Finish you. I'm gonna grape you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. Eric July could legally shoot Winner. back now. Yep. This is a murder. Yep, this is a murder threat. <laughs> that was pretty good. Chef's kiss. I love that he shat Sturgis out and then Sturgis crawled back up his ass. Did you see the Yairo live action trailer? Uh, I did not. I saw a behind the scenes um, thing of it and I couldn't find the OG trailer before I lost interest. Uh, let's see. Yeah, if, if you got it, I would love to watch it. Yeah, it's right. I like searched for it. Then I was like, ah, maybe we'll watch it on the show. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Oh, I no, no, no. That's Sturge is talking about it, like defending oh. it. Here it is. Here it is. Whatever, bud. Yara's beautiful, bud. Yeah, the, the actress that they picked to play her in this has an accent that makes it very difficult to understand what she's saying. Oh, damn. Yep. Is she going to, uh, is Sturge just <clears throat> wanted to bring him a ribeye steak? Yes. A beautiful <laughs> blonde. <laughs> this is the Saska Sisters logo, Twisted Twins Productions. Yep. It should be a pair of scissors, if you know what I mean. <laughs> or two pairs of scissors. Pull up. This. Oh, he's doing the voice of Isom at the beginning here. Uh, it, but it's not him. Uh, it's not him as the actor that's playing the character. But he's doing the voice. Yeah, boy. it's gonna be tough. This is gonna be tough. I've trained my body to do things that people like me shouldn't be able to do. But unfortunately for me, why did we hire a voice actor? Cause it's self-insert, even though he denies it. Biologist and archaeologist. This scene is so awkward. Going to be an is that good thing? It might be, actually. Guess. Won't you please join me in welcoming her to our team? Dr. Sally Rodell. Adopt or die. <laughs> Secure the area until Alpha Corps can arrive. So that was one of the Soska sisters right there. It is the truest law of the earth. Very few things have the ability to survive the test of time. So they did a voiceover for Isom, but not for her? Right. Yes. <laughs> Though we may not be around to see them to their fullest fruition, what we struggle to create now will be the triumphant echoes from the past. Outcore will be here in five minutes. Somebody asked if that was Glenn Beck running. Did, huh. did we notice that? No, I didn't. That, okay. I doubt it. I, I, I'm kind of thinking he doesn't want to actually be in any of this. Just fund it. Five minutes? It, <laughs> you would think that until you see Ben Shapiro start making cameos in his bullshit. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Thanks for the heads up. Heads up. I was here. I lived. I am still here. I'm on you. It's not clear what is going on here either. 
I can't tell what she's saying. I can't tell what's going on. I think she just hit a uh, an accept meth addict. And why did she shoot a laser up into the sky? Like, what was the point of that? Maybe she was getting her powers at that moment. She hadn't had them before and uncontrollable. Maybe she was calling a beacon to an alien. I have no fucking idea. It's the affliction of creation. I would like to thank Mr. Eusebio for allowing me the opportunity. Well, if it goes straight up into space and doesn't actually hit anything, then it saves them the effects budget of having it, like, blow apart something. Yeah. To discover and create alongside my esteemed colleagues at Producers. I would be disappointed in this acting if this was a porn film. Thank you. An archaeologist? It's a bit archaic, isn't it? She's well studied, Jerry, but if you want to question her credentials, be my guest. That's not what I was saying. That wig is ridiculous, too. It's just an unusual area yeah. of expertise to pair with biology. Like, why put a wig on him if, it, if it's going to look that fake? Just have him use his normal hair. Well, Dr. Rodell, from my understanding, is an unusual woman. Don't be threatened, Jerry. She's on a Look at that. It's fucking terrible. I guarantee you whatever hair that guy has under that wig is better, even if he's bald. Yeah, he could have like cancer hair and I'd be like, this is this is the wrong choice. Yeah. Congratulations. Ah, congratulations. She's like way bigger than all of them too. You notice that? <laughs> it's like Photo? maybe that's why she's got the strong accent. They hired somebody who like was actually like a female bodybuilder to play it. I cannot identify but, this accent. It it I I yeah. pick up sometimes she almost sounds like Scottish, but then sometimes she sounds like uh German almost. I have I have, I have no base on any of this. I'm going to call Iceland without any reason. I don't think it's a real accent. I mean, like, an, an Icelandic accent would sound like Bjork. Bjork's mm. accent is Icelandic. <laughs> you took that like a chomp. Were you trying to... She, okay, so... I, I, I talked to Jeff about this. Did she say you took that like a champ or you took it like a chump? It sounded like chump. But do you think that's just her accent and the way she says champ? I think it's her saying champ, but it sounds like chump. <laughs> you took that like a chump. Because <laughs> nobody says you took that like a, ch a chump. Nobody says you took that like a chump. You say you took that like a champ. That's the that's the phrase. Yeah. Were you trying to knock me out? No. It was meant to be a death blow. I hate it. I hate it. Is that her. Soviet now? Yeah, Is yeah, yeah. Ukrainian? Now, now we're getting like Russian in there. I, I... Yeah, right. Stand down. And then yeah, someone came in and was like, stand down. I, I think that's, uh, what are they called? Alpha core or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Executive producer Eric July. Yeah, who spent money on this shit, Eric July. I wonder if this was cheaper to make than the animated bullshit he did for Alpha Core. Probably. I've seen trailers for Youth Bowl movies that look better than this. I feel so bad for these actors. I almost want to cry for them. I mean, they got paid, probably. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know if any of these actors would look down on this experience, um, as far as a paycheck goes. Maybe if one of them think... actually, like, like if the the actor that played Yaira somehow became like a mainstream actor, then maybe she would be embarrassed about this. But otherwise, this is probably the biggest thing she's ever done. Yeah, I'm thinking she probably is like a bodybuilder and they just pulled her in yeah, like based a, on her acting skill. Like a fitness model. Yeah, they were like, let's hire this girl. She looks the part. But the Morgan weird thing Boot. is... That's her name, Morgan That's Boot. That's her name? Yeah. We got to look We gotta look up Morgan Boot and see where the fuck she's from. I tried to. I, know, I tried to really? and I can't find her anywhere. I found I someone can't. else named Morgan Boot, but it wasn't her. Uh... 
They didn't even credit Eric July, even though he did the voice of Isom. <laughs> they... The the last name Boot is that? Is there even like an etymology for the name Boot? It doesn't. I mean, it sounds like like a like an English language last name. You know what I mean? Like yeah, uh, like an I I don't it, yeah. I'm it, just I'm trying to find the, Nope. I'm a, yeah. Yeah, this sucks. It Fuck could it. be a Germanic name, but it sounds like an Asboot. Anglo name. I don't know. Yeah. I I actually am uncomfortable not knowing the answer to this. <laughs> like where she's <laughs> from? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's. A, I think because they they're they're too, they add too much. They add unnecessary shit. I think it's a fake accent that they like told her to do. Dude, that would be so bad. She says another thing here. Winter is here. Winter is here. Winter is here. Winter is here. You you know there was this TV show. A lot of people probably haven't heard of it. Um, it was called Game of Thrones, and the big saying from that was "Winter is coming." Yep. And, and then the 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 season where the winter came, it was "Winter is here." I wonder where they got the idea for this, though. It's funny because the it was they were doing hashtag Yaira Winter, but the the book isn't going to come out until like the spring or summer. <laughs> yeah, the uh, I guess she's just like Wonder Woman and Sub Zero meshed kind together. Of. Yeah, kind of. Like so, so once again he sauna chews his way into a character. I th- I feel like they picked her based on the look alone and they uh, the, like they didn't care about the acting. Maybe she is a good actor though and it was bad direction. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean I I don't I don't really give a fuck. It's a commercial, right? I'm not going to judge her. It, it, it could it could have been her bad acting, could have been a bad director, it could be her accent, could be them making her have a fake accent that's fucking weird. It's not just her, it's that guy's wig, it's everything. This is a Sasuke Sisters production. The greatest thing they ever did was Kane's See No Evil 2. Yeah. Another famed libertarian. They're getting that libertair money. Imagine libertarians being all about telling the government to let them do what they want with their money, and they do shit like this with it. Yeah. Uh, let's see... Vintner is here. Have some wine. Some wine. Oh my god! Is here. Hold on. Oh, okay. I I went to uh, I went to Morgan Boots IMDb, and yeah. uh, it's funny because she's credited. She's credited for Yaira, and then there's archive footage, and one of the one of the. One of the things is mundane Matt's three buck theater, <laughs> but there's no Cute. photos of her. There's no like info about her at all. There's, Shit. Yep. Complete unknown. Guys, if you want to start uh, a Hollywood production company, just so you can hire this woman so we can figure out more information about her, please start a Hollywood production company and hire this woman so we can find more information out about her. Yeah, that would be interesting because she's hard to find. Yeah, I, I think they filmed it up in Vancouver, right? Yes. Uh, I, I saw the behind the scenes thing. I thought it said Vancouver. The Saskas are from Vancouver. Yeah. You know, I'm just going to ask the Saska sisters. They, they have to be, they can't be that hard to talk to. Maybe. Do they have a cameo? Can I pay them $40 to ask a question? You may be able to do that. If this woman's in Vancouver, she's an hour and a half away, maybe I could hire her to play Yara in my next music video. <laughs> you could have Yara dancing on a pole? Yeah. In, in a music video? Yeah. I did a Facebook search for Morgan Boot really quick, and someone did come up, and they're from Canada, but I can't tell if it's the same person. And it's not Vancouver. They're from, like, a different part of Canada. So, 
Yeah. But who knows? She might have flown into Canada. Sure. To, uh, or she might live Vancouver. in Vancouver now. You know? Yeah. I mean, like, if you want to still live in Canada and work in movies, that Vancouver is the best city to live in because they make a lot of movies there. Yeah. 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 Vancouver is Hollywood of the North. Yep. If you ever see Seattle in a movie, chances are it's Vancouver. Yeah. That, you know what? They used to do that a lot, like, with movies set in New York, they would be filming in Toronto. Because there are some parts yeah. of Toronto that look like New York. Yeah. It's just cheaper to film in Canada than those places. Yeah. Yeah, because the government there's, subsidizes it. <laughs> there's Matt Jarbo in the chat saying, that's why I want to exercise my guaranteed Canadian citizenship and move to Vancouver. So you can figure out uh, who this woman is. Please, yeah, who is this? Matt, do it. Move to Canada so you can figure out who this woman is. I need you to do this for me. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sleep well at night until I know. I've been to Vancouver multiple times. Love it there. It's uh, it's it's everything I like about it, like it has pretty much everything I like about Seattle, but it's in Canada, which in my opinion makes it better. So <laughs> better public transit, go. just better everything. I used to go there very regularly, but I would spend a lot of time in Surrey, which yeah, is the, the, the shithole of of Vancouver. It's dirty, nasty. There was all sorts of like haggard, really mutilated homeless people around. They were ahead of the time. Um, Seattle caught up. So Flock Opossum is clarifying that that is, in fact, the same Morgan boot. So, yeah. Well, snap. Tagged in one of the Saska Facebook posts. Yep. There you go. Yep. Now we got to figure out where the hell she her accent's from, or find videos of her. She's outside from. Of this to... That's a fake accent. She's from like Alberta, so hmm. they don't. Yeah, that's a fake accent. They told her to do that accent, which is fucking insane. You like it's one thing if the actor has an accent; it's another thing to make her fake an accent that is so bad you can't even understand what she's saying. That's so ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, if they had Eric July do the voiceover for Isom, maybe they should have hired somebody with a naturalized accent to voiceover for this woman. The whole thing was wonderful. I'm so proud of the rip I, I wonder how many fans that are up Eric's ass, like like young uh, Sturgis, saw this and it solidified their oh. $300 comic book purchase. Oh, he loves it. Uh, here, here, here. Here's Sturgis talking about Hello, it. everyone. I am Renown Zero, and we are back again talking about Yaira number He's one. He's wearing the Yaira t-shirt right now, too. I, his, almost his entire wardrobe is rip clothing. One as My today is a fan. The, the launch pre-order for the comic book written by the Saska sisters. And of course, we did have a live action trailer that was given to us. I did watch that the live action trailer. To absolutely us. fantastic. That was given to us. It was given to us. And would you why have blessed fans. us, bud? Can't wait to so see happy, more bud. live action. But as of the recording of this video, it is currently sitting at $853,293. Oh, God. Got to skip this part. The like... I guess it made a uh, million dollars in 24 hours. Yeah, that's respectable. They're like, it beat the uh, the speed that ISUM made to a million. And then I'm wondering how many actual purchases compared to ISUM. Because they didn't have $300 packages for ISUM like they do for this one. How much you want to bet someone just goes in and manually types these numbers in? This is just a yeah. website. It's very possible. Yeah. I did throw my hat into purchasing. Oh my god! I love, I love how this is how they, this is how they flex their fandom to post a receipt how much they spent, and and they'll show like their spread of like you know six different copies of the same comic book. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh... there you go, bud. When you when you simp for the Saska twins, you get twice the chance of them noticing you, bud. Yara, I did a full on. I want it all. 100 bucks did get a thank you from the Saskas themselves and we're going to see how the salt <sighs> flows of course blade devil 2 no blade devil skip the fuck out of this blah 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 blade blah, blah, devil blah, 2 blah. bro i swear to god the girls are all 300 years old bro because now, they have puffy start pink nipples like me here of course with dark nook fx 
another person who has a dead YouTube channel. Who he does the hashtag who is Sturges. You, you know, the point of a hashtag is to like get other people to use it, not you be the only one to use it. And everyone knows who Sturges is. More people know you as Sturges than whatever the fuck you want your name. We noun Zewo. Nobody knows who that is. Yeah, you know, if it, if it wasn't for the biker rally, I guarantee you, you'd be able to search Sturges on YouTube and he'd be the first <laughs> thing that came up. They yeah. some really weird things like Sturges can't wait to take it all because I got the I want it all package for Yara number one. When I say hashtag who is Sturges. See, you just acknowledged that you know who they're talking about when they say Sturges. You just <laughs> you just acknowledge that. And actually, we do have a recording. Hello, everyone. I'm Sturgis. There you go. There's oh, also... caught him. Caught, caught him. 4K. Yeah, there's there's also this. Um, where is it? I'll use my camera to essentially look directly into it and tell you to go fuck yourself. Oh, no, no, no. It's this one. Air July could possibly destroy my butt. See? Why are you gay? Because, of course, they always have to throw the same homoerotic insults all the time. Of course, we had to have a big observation from good old Tizzle Spencer, you know, the guy who makes these masterpiece things. He says, as of this post... That's some as real broke nigga shit to show off receipts. <laughs> now I know Struggies has no money. At least he knows he's Struggies, though. Sorry, bum-ass Struggies. So yeah, anybody who has to tell you how much they paid for their new shoes is a fucking broke bitch. Sturges lived with his mom in the Bronx, New York for a long time. And then his job in New York wanted him to get the vaccine and he didn't want it <laughs> and he didn't want to get it. So he moved to Florida and got a job there. And now he lives with a roommate down there. So, Cute. Yeah. So this is the question I was asking earlier. I was wondering how much of the uh, the money earned uh, was actual book sales compared to the initial run, and it looks like the book sales were under two hundred thousand dollars, and the majority of the money earned was merchandising. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. I mean, they were selling like a cardboard box for a, a, a insane amount of money. Five dollar cardboard box yeah and you had to fold it up yourself too you had to assemble it yourself <laughs> this post by the way he wrote it's supposed to be as of this post you want to claim that you're intelligent yet you always misspell or misgrammar a sentence i gotta do it real quick okay this very second the total amount of books sold is 6693 but as i said it's over 9300 if we average that out to a 29 dollars for cover a then they've m made 194000 off the books themselves. Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? What a great argument. Who cares? I don't care. Cyberfrog 2. Nobody cares. The campaign was overinflated with merchandise as well. They sold less than AlphaCore number one as far as the books sold based on what we're able to see, not including the add-on books. That means 490000 are from the merchandise sales. The books may not be popular yet, but it's clear the big winner in the campaign is all the merchandise like posters and shirts. There is room for error as there could be anywhere from an estimated 50 to 100K in books at high price points, i.e. cover C or CGC signed books. Let's address the actual elephant in the room. The book is late. No, it isn't. There is no denying it. Yes, it is. You're in denial. You're in cope. You're in seed. And you're in mold. In fact, I'll go as far as to say the book isn't even completed. He... All like Sturgis is terminally online. He's terminally online. All he does is use meme terminology and then repeat whatever Eric says. He has no original thoughts of his own. Or print it. The book is completed. That's why the campaign has been launched, you dummy. That's the only time the campaign's launch for pre order is when the book is finished. I'm pretty sure they've already finished Yara number two and are working on Yara number three. The fulfillment date starts on May 26th, the day the campaign ends. In my opinion, Air July scrambled in a pan to get Yara number one out before technical winter was over on March 17th. So you contradict yourself by saying it's late and then saying winter isn't over until March 19th. So you contradicted yourself in the same sta statements here. We were told that fulfillment was a big issue, something the Ripperverse was proud to have solved, except when I pre-ordered Gyra number one, I was blindsided about how long it would take to even get my book. You're a guy who's literally buying it to hate on it. We already know you don't like the other books, so why are you purchasing it? Why are you continuing to, to support something you don't like? 
This is two months and two weeks long. If Eric had simply been honest about Yaira's delay, more people would be receptive to the book. I'll wait to reserve judgment on how popular the book is to his customer base in a month, but it's too early to tell. The only actual definitive data we can ex extrapolate from the campaign is more people... Extrapolate? He's he <laughs> he said he just said extrapolate extrapolate, but he's he's criticizing the way other people use grammar and misspell things. Extrapolate, can you extrapolate? What can you extrapolate from but this? In everything else but the books at the moment. Also, this is clearly a crowd crowdfunded book. No, it isn't. It's a pre-order campaign, not a crowdfunded book. The book's already printed. The books are Prove already it. done. Prove it. Prove that the books are already printed. And paid for. You idiot. Stop bringing up these old talking points because you're a salty moron. It's 100% going to use the funds to make a target number. How many did they print? Why would they print, uh, why would they print them before they know how many they would need? Why would they do that? That doesn't make any sense. Nick copy, so there isn't a ton of. That's how they end up. That's how they end up uh, having too many of them and trying to sell them for five bucks a pop later on. Extra sitting in the warehouse. How do I know? You don't know. They won't reveal print numbers until late April. That means the book isn't going to go into print until the end of April after they've gotten a good idea of the data to suggest how many more extra they need to send to the printers. Well, for cover D, it's always going to be printed. So extra polite. What the fuck just happened? Check one, two. Why can't I hear him anymore? Give me just a second, guys. All right. Oh, can you guys hear me? I, I'm making sure it's not me. Can you guys hear me right now? Okay. Huh. Did his audio just die in his video and he uploaded it like this? Let me let me test another video. Just j I'm giving Sturges the benefit of the doubt right now. <laughs> his it, the sound just died in his video and he probably uploaded it without even realizing it. But he's I'm gonna, had weird audio issues before too, so yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. But like, if I recorded a video, I would it, a pre-recorded video. I would watch it, maybe on maybe on like a faster speed or something. But I would watch it before I upload it to make sure it's okay. Let's say he's done it before. Me. Yeah. Okay. So dum, all, da -dum, dum. <laughs> all the audio is working on our end. He up. What a fucking loser, dude. That's just like Sturgis, bud. Look at him. <laughs> he probably doesn't even know this, too. <sighs> and and th another thing, I would go back and delete this video if I realized that there was like a huge chunk with no audio on it. When when you're live, you can't control shit like this. But when it's pre-recorded, you should be able to make sure it's Seething good. at this point. There. Stop coping. What, what the fuck was that? His fans probably tried to tell him that his audio went out and he banned them for trolling. Coping and seething so much. Coping and seething. Coping and seething. Yeah, you seem to care enough to comment on his observations. Oh, the irony. You care enough to comment on his commentary about observations made through observatory commentary. So I'm not the one talking about how little I care about XXX. Earlier, he read the word extrapolate and said extrapolate. <laughs> I heard that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just mocking him for talking so much about how little he cares. You're not mocking anybody. I'm monetizing you literally right now. People mock you and your types all the time because you never say anything of substance that matters in the conversation. <laughs> God, it, it, this is another reason why he's kind of like Jared. He, he lacks the self-awareness to be like, oh, wait, I actually do that. Not these people. He does this all the, the time. One thing, the one thing Jared has, and it might just come down to his... Uh, flip floppy nature is he will self uh, realize things at times. Yes, but he never holds on to that thought. <laughs> no, he'll go from he'll go from some real self awareness and then completely flip it. It's true. You try to find a gotcha or an own when you're an absolute moron. That's why your account is called Moronic Opinions. You are 
a moron and you always have oh good own like <laughs> opinions yeah i wonder i wonder what calling somebody a moron that's named themselves moronic opinions really does yeah he's probably gonna quit twitter now or whatever in fact, he he yeah. a little. totally owned him yeah but my reply he had to retweet and say how little he cared about that too yes to show everyone else who's watching this how much of a moron you are that's how twitter works you get more engagement when you quote tweet stupid learn how twitter works before you start talking like you know how yeah twitter but works. not every just, like like Quote tweeting is cool and everything, but th that's the only way Sturgis replies to people. He never just does a normal <laughs> reply. It's like the morons who try to tell me how YouTube works when they don't do YouTube. But you care so much about pointing out you literally did the same thing. You even came out of nowhere. The same thing. You know, he has the same accent as Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny has like a Bronx <laughs> accent. So I, yeah. it's funny that he calls other people like Bunny, like Buster Baxter, when he's he's kind of a Bugs <laughs> Bunny-ish kind of person, you know? And assert, yeah. assert yourself for the heck of it that you double posted to me. And you're telling us we're easy to mock. You didn't follow that to the conclusion, did you? So he's basically using your logic against you. By the way, shout out to Drive. He's Club. also he's a little Elmer Fudd with his speech yep. impediment. Yep. Yeah, he's kind of a mixture of Bugs Bunny and Elmer Fudd. <laughs> yep. Logic Terrible. against you and making you look like a moron now. While you tried to make me look like a moron, it didn't work too well for you. How's that clout chasing, Matthew Floyd? So she want to talk about EJ, talk kind of all kinds of stuff to me. Yeah, and you have me posted on your stuff back in January. I was like, how's all that clout chasing working for you? This was someone talking to Garrett here. I'm guessing you were speaking only through gifts because you were too dumb to use words. Hey, it bud, welcome to my channel where I wee weed all the Twitter stuff I did in the last week. That's all he does. Yeah, be because I'm too afraid to respond to live video of people. It's true. <laughs> he is. He did it like the first time or so, like one or two times, and then he stopped. He can't deal with the bants. He needs to have complete control. He was responding to comments on his own page for a while. Yep. Then he then he got scared of all the comments he was getting, so he backed away from doing it on his own page. Well, there was a point where he pulled up a video where we were shit-talking him, and instead of playing the video, he responded to the comments. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's not what we said, dude. Like, you're not owning us by responding to other people's comments on our video. That's not how it works. It's okay. And it would be one thing if he was actually owning the comments, but he was getting owned by them, too. <laughs> you know, people didn't buy Ripperverse comics because they can actually read. I read all three of the Ripperverse comics so I do have. I Sum 1, I Sum 2, and Alpha Core 1. I think Alpha Core 1 is the best written. I think I, I Sum 2 is better than I Sum is 1. Is he bragging I about being able to read a comic book? I think so. I mean, he... He brags about buying the same comic book five times with different covers. Every book was good. These haters are so butthurt. You would think Eric kicked their dogs or something. <laughs> if you know about that, you know about that. The salt farm has begun. So Could you imagine like, it, it, like if you liked a musical act and you, you, you went on Twitter and posted like a receipt for like a concert and 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 like their merch and whatever it's it's so sad it's it's hard and it's, then yeah yeah and then in the infinite sadness that musical act responds and thanks you for it yeah then you pin <laughs> it to the top of your wall like dude look at I this won't, i won't lie if someone spent 300 dollars on my album I'd respond to. Sure, that's that's the only reason Eric July pays attention to this guy at all. <laughs> you got people laughing. This guy's an artist. He has Inglorious Rex and his banner. Talk about I'm laughing because you don't get that kind of support. This guy laughing. Meanwhile, you can't even make two hundred bucks a month on your on your crappy Patreon as you make puppets do very questionable things to p different p other puppets didn't have enough room in your mom's credit card to get the 999 bundle shame i mean you don't have enough Wait a money second. To actually is he judging ripoff verse for making puppets do questionable things to other puppets yes because this is the guy who made action figures do questionable things to other action figures. that is true that video does exist by anything naruto you sit up here and cry all day. Meanwhile, I've never seen you post a single comics gay book, right? But I could do it. Effing clown hilarious. Ba -da -ba -ba. 
<laughs> that happens in almost every one of his videos. But uh, uh, let's keep going. We think that is computer error, and one of his porns just got done downloading. It's a uh, it's the uh, Windows notification sound. So any notification that pops up will make that sound. Yes, I. I would I, I know how to mute those so they don't happen while I'm streaming. Your pants. <laughs> what you do in your free time is a private matter. This person said you're a brainlit grifter. <laughs> Shut up. <clears throat> oh, shut up. What a great comeback. You really showed him. Dr. William, that's all. Yes, we could see it crusted in your beard. I could see it crusted in your dead YouTube channel too. <laughs> he always he always falls back on that. He falls back on like YouTube statistics. And that kind of stuff, it it doesn't work. You Our guy Sturgis has seen some growth, but the amount of mockery, hate growth, puppets, video game videos, the things that have been made to mock him is through the roof, dude. Your yeah, new numbers are baby numbers compared to the number of people just shitting down your back. Nope. Tony is a hilarious name. I thought he wouldn't be able to outdo Gooding, but he managed it somehow. Yet you sit up there and cry <laughs> in chats all the time and trash cast. I mean, it literally did nothing to stop the momentum of this book at all. I like to further be known as Jan Tony Sika. Oh my God, these names stand for bitch ass Turner because it probably does. Why does this Walking Dead panel seem so fitting? Look, EVS, because you gotta tag you gotta tag Daddy E because you're a little bitch. You tag your <laughs> parasocial daddies all the time. You just tagged Eric and Yara in his three hundred dollar notice me receipt. I remember one night, like I, we were doing something and not paying attention to Sturges, and Sturges somehow got in his paranoid brain that we somehow. It, got one of his twitch mods banned or something but we had nothing to do with it and he was tweeting at like nerd Roddick and like all of his people that he worships <laughs> online and none of them cared none of them replied yeah. or retweeted or anything he does this all the time none of them care about you sturges they want your money it's a key issue with more mindless monikers he's the new stan lee enough said so you're admitting he's like stan lee is that what you're doing here you're dead He's like Stan Lee now. I thought he wasn't the black Stan Lee. I thought that's what I've been told. Blah, blah, blah. What the F are these names? What the F is your life, honestly? Oh, dude. So many of his insults sound like they're from elementary school. What you like? Yeah. And they're not classics like I know you are. What am I? No. <laughs> that's what I want to know. Where the, where the F is your life? What the F is your wife? Yeah, that's like a short bus insult. It's a full-on salt mine. It's exactly what it is. Oh, yeah, and then he always brings up a picture of this guy as if that owns him. See, it, this is just low IQ. Why don't, you, why don't you come up with something to make him look stupid instead of just posting this, a picture of him? Is this the ripoff verse guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it I looks think he, like if uh, Von Helton was cast to play Roger Klotz in the Dub <laughs> movie. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, kind of. He does kind of have Von Helton face. This is how I respond. <laughs> I think he's a Scottish guy or something. This clown all the time. This is all I really need to do to make fun of you. No, that's all you can do because your brain can't come up with anything better. Oops. Darren, just why don't you post a high resolution photo of me? I know you have one. Nobody has high resolution photos of you. You're not good looking. You're freaking. Hit. Oh, so if he was good looking, you would do it. Is what you're saying. Yeah. He's got a folder full of high resolution Eric July hairy shoulder pictures. Yep. Hideous, bro. You look like a crackhead. You oh, look like really? an absolute Isn't crackhead. Isn't it funny that that young Clippa Riley said he was going to shave Eric July's shoulders and within what, just a couple of months Eric July shaved his own shoulders? In it That's like it, Essentially, bud, he sh shaved his shoulders just by rem he by did. yeah by proxy. Eric needed to hold on to that shoulder hair forever, yep, just to prove a point. But he shaved it off because he buckled. Yeah, bro, stop acting like you look good. We need someone to load beard Eric July. You don't. <laughs> oh, I man. don't actually. Could you imagine if he ever got load shouldered? <laughs> 
Ah, loaded He's looking shoulder. like a cummy Legion of Doom. Yeah. Care about his observations. And your name doesn't surprise anyone. You always have ironic opinions. The name fits you. So you make misleading thumbnail. Damn, isn't that against TOS? No, it isn't. Not that I'm aware of. It actually is. Misleading titles and thumbnails are technically against TOS. Because I was think that's case- why uh, Idubs got his video taken down originally when he uh, put up the Asian Jake Paul video. He had Jake Paul in the thumbnail, but his video was about rice gum. Oh and yeah. He, he got it. He got it taken down day one. A lot of people will be gone from YouTube. Not that the rip reverse or it's retarded teeth suckers have ever cared about the law or TOS. Yeah, because. You listen to a guy who practices law in Minnesota about how Texas law works. Is he like, is he cutting stuff? Okay, I'm trying to, what's wrong with his audio? Is he editing stuff out because he's afraid of getting flagged or something? I don't know what these long pauses are. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure. Yeah. Law works differently from Minnesota law. I've read Texas law on the use of... Oh, you're basically a lawyer, bud. Um, pew, pew, force. So, I recall you saying I wanted to be black. You're not a serious person. No, you... When you're when you're around black people, you all of a sudden have, like, like a black accent. And then you also claim you're from the hood. But then, like, the next sentence, you're like, well, actually, I grew up <laughs> near the hood, near projects. Yeah. I like how he's over here saying um, Nick Ricada practices law in a different state, so it doesn't constitute him talking about Texas law. But then in the same sentence, he can talk about Texas yeah. law being a little uh, weird Floridian Bronx outcast that sits around reading comic books all day. Right. That has not. Don't I mean, know. like someone with a law degree is going to understand the law better anyway than some. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter so where stupid. you live. So yeah. dumb. So yeah, I think I think we're good on the Sturge. I think uh I think we're to wrap it up here tonight. We got to seventy almost seventy three percent. I appreciate it. Yeah, good good show. Everybody who hung out tonight. Get your ten dollar patronage in. You should. Ben's got Ben's got this. 3.5 hour documentary coming out. You saw the trailer. You might want to play the trailer before we end the show, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, patreon.com slash DP. Sign up the $10 level. There's other stuff that we've got coming up, too. You know, we uh, we have a private show coming up. Uh, we have two of them. We have one on Friday the 22nd, one on uh, Friday the 29th. We have our movie review coming up a week from today. Uh, I'm, I'm probably going to try to work in a post show coming up soon, too, because we haven't done those in a while, and I'd like to start doing those a little more frequently also. Yeah. So sign up at the $10 level. You'll get a bunch of extra video content. Um, yeah, and I'll play the trailer uh, before we play the ending credits here. So... We're going to go ahead and do that, and we'll see all you guys back here again on Saturday. Have a good night, everybody. Night. Eleven thirty. Eleven thirty. All right. So we've got an hour and 15 minutes. All right. I see an otter. Somebody's going to fuck that otter. No! Yeah. <laughs> oh, robbery! You wanna fucking go? Let's do another. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm not fucking around. Like, I'll, I'll murder a motherfucker right now. She told Ben to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shooting your only fans right now. <laughs> goodbye, Jeff Holiday. Goodbye. He's headed back. Uh, Portland keeps my ass again. Yeah. In this
the beginning, there was nothing. And then there was the Drunken Peasants Podcast. Drunken Peasants. Drunken Peasants. Drunken Peasants. Drunken Peasants. From the strangest corners of the internet. Gonna get TP'd by Billy and Ben. You know where you can find them at. Get ready cause they're gonna kick your... Drunken peasants, drunken peasants, drunken peasants, drunken peasants.